Hi, Jack Snow. This is Greg Poppy in Las Vegas, set to watch the UNLV Rebels with a record of one and two against the San Jose State Spartans. One, one and one they are overall. Dropping back deep is Sheldon Candley, number 20. Their talented tailback and Gabe Smith, number one, one of their backup wide receivers. To kick it off is Alonzo Mendoza, backup punter. They've had some punting problems here in Las Vegas. We're underway. Hope you enjoy it. It's going to Sheldon Candley at his three-yard line. He's across the 25, and he bowls his way out across the 30-yard line at almost the 35. Nice kick return by Candley, who is not having a very good year for turning kicks overall. That one, 33 yards. There's the quarterback, the senior, Ralph Martini, having a very good time of it. He has not been picked off the last nine consecutive quarters. The people behind him and the main man to watch is Sheldon Candley, also Maceo Barbosa. Rich Sarlot, good at blocking tight end with Byron Jackson, the wide receiver, and Gary Charlton. They'll often employ three wide receivers. Front of his Hines, Emil Bender, and Anthony Gallegos for the first time plays this year at right guard. And back in the lineup is Penny Yosefa. They stop Candley after a very short gain on first down. The Vegas the defense, they play a three-man front and start three true freshmen. Chuck Reed, Mansfield Dinkins is a freshman at nose guard. Aaron Christian are the three up front. The linebacker, David Clark, is the only returning member to this group. They're vulnerable there, but they have a very good defensive secondary. Charles Anthony and Carlton Johnson, the two best. Second down, and he's going deep. Martini, good coverage out there, and the pass is incomplete. He was trying to hit Walter Bricks, Jr. It is Tony Dilly, number 17, who was on the coverage for Nevada, Las Vegas. There is a flag down at the spot, apparently at the 20-yard line. There's a flag that could be interference or holding, Jack. I think so. Dilly was right there, and it looked as if he may have bumped him just a little bit, but uh, 83, Walter Brooks Jr. jumps up. He wants a, uh, a pass interference call against UNLV, and he may get it. Let's see. Tony Dilly is a senior out of Chino, California. Did not play at all much. Interference. Automatic first down. It is defensive pass interference. 15-yard penalty. This is one thing that San Jose State's going to do tonight. They're going to push the ball up the field via the pass. They want to go deep. They want to stretch out. They think they can do it with Martini. Right there, the receiver comes back inside. He definitely does run into Tony Dilly. And they had double coverage, and they still interfered with Walter Brooks, Jr. Here's Sheldon Candley, and he is quickly under tackle. Stacy Monroe, a junior linebacker from right here in Las Vegas, went to Western High School. He's a transfer from Dixie Junior College in the state of Utah. A gain of only two for Sheldon Candley. That'll bring up a second and eight for the Spartans. Remember now this defense for the Rebels, a young defense. Let's see if the offense for the Spartans try to search out the youngsters and work on them. Looks like they're going to play action the reverse and Martini is going deep downfield. For Charlton it is broken up by Dilly, number 17. He made a nice play to come over and defend there. Also the left quarterback, David Epperson was there to double up on Gary Charlton. Good positioning on the part of David Epperson, number eight, as you watch him come back to the huddle. Did not allow the receiver to beat him deep inside of the post. And for the Rebels, they're going to have to have somebody deep in the hole tonight to just quickly find out exactly what the Spartans are doing. They're going deep on you early, so you got to keep a man in the hole. It's yeah, somewhat interesting they would try to go deep here because Martini is not a tremendously strong arm quarterback, despite the fact he threw for over 300 yards last week against Pacific and a touchdown. He's more of a mechanical type quarterback. He overshoots Sheldon Candley out of the backfield, and uh, that will bring up a fourth down and eight. The Spartans' offense does not perform well of the first series. They were helped out on the pass interference, but Martini and the group did not generate much themselves. So we'll see Eric Negre, number 12, into punt. This year on his 25 punts, he has a 36.8 average. Good pressure, but it gets it away. This is Hunky Cooper, backup quarterback, number 14, who will do everything for them. 
Or Nevada, Las Vegas will play wide receiver. Also play a little uh, tailback. The gray, the junior out of La Granada, California. 39-yard punt and a four-yard return. A flag, though, is lying at the line of scrimmage. Actually, in the backfield, it's lying at the 35-yard line. And they are calling it back. Referee Jack Gatto is saying, come back on the field. But he is talking to Nevada, Las Vegas, and Carlton Johnson, number one, their safety man. See, they're going to take that penalty and maybe force him to punt. It's fourth down and about eight and a half, nine yards to go. In this situation, you often see a person on the punt team leaving prematurely. That could be the situation. Jack Gatto will get us updated on what's going on down there. Now he's talking to Hesh Kolar. I have no idea because I didn't see a preliminary indication by the official. And well, he's, give you a quick indication. He's not giving us one yet, Jack. We're all befuddled what's going on here, but he's going to turn his mic on and tell us. Jim Strong, 35 years of age, first year as a head coach. I got your flag. Then we have running into the kicker. Mm. Five-yard penalty. Penalty is refused. First down. Running into the kicker. And the penalty is refused. Yeah, it was not going to result in an automatic first down. That's why they refused it. Yeah, because it was not a roughing the kicker. If you rough the kicker, you get a personal foul call. But in this instance, it was running into the kicker. There's Jim Strong. Last three years with Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. And here's his offensive lineup. His quarterback is Derek Stott. Marvin Eastman will get most of the work at the fullback slot. Walters, McGowans, Mayhi, and McCardle, the man to watch. Up front, they have a big, strong offensive line. Reynolds is 6'6", 297, and Dustin Quinton is 6'6", 305. They give it up the middle right away to Marvin Eastman. He gets a very short gain on first down as they go to the option quickly. San Jose State defensively ranks 15th in the nation. Veo Eddie, Bleich, and Powers all had good games last week. Schlaba, Steve Heber playing for Lampkins, and Burnham playing for... Lionel Mayo. Paul Franklin is also playing for the injured Eddie Thomas. Now they have three key defenders out of their lineup tonight. The same problem they had last week, though, and they beat Pacific 28 to 14. It is second down and nine for Derek Stott, who was confused and will now call a timeout. Well, he is not the only one in Sam Boyd <laughs> Silver Bowl that is confused. I think Jack Gatto was confused. Jim Strong confused. We're all confused. Let's take a break and come back and start it over. 12.33 to play, first quarter. Sports Channel's coverage of college football is brought to you by the Chicago Sun-Times, Chicago's number one selling newspaper. There are over $375,000 in cash prizes waiting for you in Suntime Social Security sweepstakes. Look for your winning number every day in Chicago's number one selling newspaper, the Chicago Sun-Times. Derek Stott, the junior out of Cerritos, California. Jim Strong says he's a very heady player with great competitive spirit, and so far he's been performing pretty well. He's thrown four touchdown passes this year, Jack, just one INT. He faces a second and nine. 544 yards, not bad after just three ball games. Little play action pass on the second and nine. He's going deep downfield, and it is incomplete. He was trying to go to Vince McGowan's. Las Vegas crowd feels there was a unnecessary big blow there inflicted by Paul Franklin, the quarterback, as he pounded the man after the ball was already over his head. Let's take a look at the team defense of San Jose State. They love to hit, and they're very effective. They are 15th in the nation in total defense. 18 quarterback sacks in the first three games. They had six last week. Incredibly, they held the Pacific Tigers to negative one yards rushing last week. The Tigers ran that 
Tiger stretch, their version of the run and shoot. They were doing a lot of chucking and ducking, though, as they were all over them. Here's a pitch inside to McGowan's. Across the 20, a 25, and he has first down yardage at the 30-yard line. Mike Schlaba finally makes the tackle, but the little pitch works. McGowan will be coming from the right side, and it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a rollout. McGowan will get there late. Now watch him. He'll come from the left side as you look at him. See him right there? Five sneaks right down the line of scrimmage. A quick little pitch in there by Derek Scott. Good move to the outside. Now he's looking for some blocking downfield. Sneaks around 46. Mike Slava. Slava comes up there. Excellent job of running. Nice pitch on the part of Derek Stott. That's a nine-yard pickup. McGowan's is lining up as a slot receiver. And they hand it off inside to Marvin Eastman, the senior fullback out of Merced. Is tackled immediately by Steve Heber, number 48. Inside linebacker replacing Everett Lampkins, their top tackler and signal caller with arthroscopic knee surgery on September the 13th. He'll be out four to six weeks. Heber, not a tremendously large guy to play inside, 219 pounds, but has great mobility, can slide left and right very nicely. Last week he made his first collegiate start, played very well, a couple of quarterback sacks. Overall, he has three this year. Second down and nine. Stott again pump faking. Now he's under big pressure. And that ball was coming forward. They will rule that an incomplete pass. And there you see the type of pressure the Spartans will put on. Schlaba, Mike Schlaba. The, yeah, the Schlaba again. We saw him doing this an awful lot last week. He'll come from the bottom of your screen. The quarterback Stott's going to roll away. Now he kind of feels him. He can feel him. He's got to get rid of that football. Doesn't see him. Doesn't see him. Here comes 46. Slava goes up high. I'll tell you what, very close to being a, a fumble, but a heck of a job of continuing to come by Mike Slava. Number 49, Charles Burnham, will also put a lot of pressure on Schlaba from the other side. Third down and nine. The Spartans love to blitz. They'll blitz linebackers. They'll blitz deep back people. Here's the rollout. Catch by McGowings, and he is driven out of bounds strongly by the rollerback. Anthony Washington well short of the first down, and Las Vegas will be forced to punt. They didn't even look towards the direction of Keenan McCardle on that series. Every play went to McGowan's. Now, and you know that uh, San Jose State is going to be keenly aware of Keenan. There's no question of that. But uh, University of Las Vegas, Nevada, what they wanted to do is do a little bit of everything on that last possession. They showed him an awful lot. Luis Solorio is punting. Hesh Kolar takes it at his 28-yard line. Spinning off of bodies, he will reach. The 37-yard line, Kolar, an outstanding job returning punts for the first time as a collegiate last week as he is filling in for the injured Eddie Thomas. We have played exactly four minutes in Las Vegas. We have no score. The Rebels and the Spartans. Do you need a car? Listen, each year government agencies auction, sell, and liquidate thousands of cars and trucks, and the bidding starts as low as $30. Government vehicles, luxury cars taken from drug dealers, criminals, and thousands more seized, repossessed, sold through bankruptcy proceedings. Now find out how you can grab the car you want at government liquidation and bankruptcy prices. Bid as low as $30 for Porsches, Mercedes, Ferraris, Corvettes, family cars, and trucks. Find out how to get the car you want now. Call 1-900-HOT-AUTO. That's 1-900-468-2886. Just $2 a minute. They have tagged the Spartans with a clipping penalty on that punt return by Hesh Kolar. A 15-yard penalty takes them from their own 36 back to their 21. Let's see if it's number 22, linebacker Chris Clark, who clips. Right there, the, the UNLV man had a five on his back. He did take it from the backside, a good call. I think that may have been number 35 for UNLV. Talking to Terry Shea today, he said, we have to find a way to eliminate these penalties. Mainly, it is the defenders. They will take a lot of uh, late hits. The administration he inherited, Claude Gilbert here, was known for the extra tag, and he does not want to be known as that kind of football team, nor does he want to have a lot of foolish uh, violations like that. This team will really hurt themselves with the penalties. Yeah, you want to cut that down. San Jose State has been penalized 27 times for 220 yards so far this season. Here's Sheldon Canley on the pitch. Out across the 25-yard line. First down across the... 30. He's down to the 33 before Tony Dilly 
Number 17 tackles him. That is a nice pickup of about 12 yards for Sheldon Cantley. Watch Cantley before he finally breaks away. He'll nestle in behind Bryce Burnett, his tight end, 88. You'll see at the top of the screen to the left side. Watch him get his hand out there on Bryce Burnett. Help him along. Now he sees the seam. Boom, he pops right up into it before he's finally brought down by Ramon Hilton. Excellent job of running. They give it back to Cantley on the first and 10. He has 10 more plus yards out to the 45-yard line. That is a pickup of 10 more plus for Sheldon Candley. He is second all time at all purpose running behind Tim Kirsch, who played in the early 80s. Candley is the country's top returning all purpose back. Last year he rushed for over 1,200 yards. He had receiving yards over 350, and he had kickoff return yards at 959 yards. And he is going to be emphasized today. The Spartans feel they could run the football against Nevada Las Vegas. They hand it off this time to Maceo Barbosa. The other running back, they list him as a five back. He's somewhat of a fullback, but really somewhat in between of a fullback and a tailback. Jack, number 29, Barbosa. Exactly, five foot ten, 202 pounds. Maceo can run, uh, you know, as the tailback if he has to because he's got decent size, but then again, he's strong enough to run inside as a fullback. He picked up a couple of yards on that carry, bringing up the second down at about, about seven. And they're on 47-yard line. Fake the pitch. Rolling right, setting up, and he... Oh, a tremendous effort by the reserve tight end, Bryce Burnett. He could not make the catch as Martini overthrew him. Burnett is 6'3", 220 pounds, the better of their two tight ends as far as catching the football. He was the drag man on that last route. They ran a double slot formation to the far side, two receivers, and Burnett lines up as a tight end. He'll come right across the field. He is a safety valve receiver. You'll see him come in late. There he is right there. Makes a gallant effort. He has it through. Oh, they yeah. actually gave Excellent. him that catch. Yes, absolutely. Great catch. He caught the football. I thought he dropped it. What a uh, tremendous uh, catch by Burnett, a nine-yard pickup Good catch. for the first down of the 45, and then they run Candley again, and he has pushed it out across the 40 to the 37-yard line. We, we are seeing in the first quarter tonight, we saw last week, if you're with us, for the first week of the Big West on Sports Channel, when Sheldon Candley ran for 65 of his 110 yards in the fourth quarter of their win over Pacific. It's when he finally broke loose, man. When you and I kept talking about when's he going to break loose, he's got the skills, he's got the ability, he's got to cut it loose. He's starting out early this inning. Second down and two from the 37 play action. They dump it out here to Byron Jackson. He has good yardage across the 20, and he's down to the 19-yard line of Nevada, Las Vegas, before again a very busy number 17, Tony Dilly, makes the tackle following a 17-yard pickup. This is what you call a split end screen. 29 goes in motion. That's Barbosa. They'll utilize him as a blocker. Jackson takes one step down the field, comes back. Now watch him pick up the block from 29 and use him and then cut back inside. Heck of a job on the, job on the part of Baseo Barbosa. Excellent blocking and great running after the catch. And there he is, 82, Byron Jackson. He caught a touchdown pass last week. First down and 10 from the Rebel 20 under pressure. He is under tackle. He is sacked in there. Ramon Hilton, number 55. A freshman inside linebacker with the big 11-yard quarterback sack. This kid's a true freshman. Now, if you're in the defense, this is what you see offensively. You want to come across. Here comes 55 right up the gap between the guard and the tackle, Anthony Gallegos, and uh, Mike Bender does a fine job. Gets in there on the quarterback, brings down Ralph Martini. Hilton was a much heralded freshman recruit out of Dallas. They play a couple of freshman linebackers inside. Handley fighting his way, stays on his feet before Carlton Jansen uh, tackles him. That was a tremendous bit of balance there by Sheldon Candley. Looks altogether different. We're going to get a shot of Carlton Johnson. If you're the free safety, now watch him read. Recognize now it comes up to Phil. He's got to break down and make the tackle. He sees him going by, tackles him high, and that way he's going to ride him down to the ground. Nice job by Carlton Johnson. Good, tough, great competitor. We have 7-13 and rolling to play in the first quarter. No score. Third down and nine. San Jose State has not been good getting the ball to the end zone once they cross the 20. For the end zone they go, and he overthrows Bryce Burnett, the tight end who was wide open down the middle. They, what, they were playing man-to-man -man on the two outside receivers, and you're right, Burnett delayed a count, came off, and he was wide open. Nobody in the hole for UNLV. Martini obviously disappointed. 
Terry Shea was talking about this in his preparation for this ball game. We have to get better scoring inside the 20. Martini's been very good driving it to the 20, but he's got to get better bringing it in the end zone. Raul De La Fleur, who has had three balls blocked this year, including one last week out of the hold of Mike Jordan. It is blocked again. The fourth they have had this year. They lost the ball game the very first week, lost an opportunity to win a ball game. They wind up tying Louisville. De La Fleur has it shoved back in his face again. That was a short effort. A 38-yard field goal attempt is blocked. So we stay scoreless in Las Vegas. 6.55 to play, first quarter. We fall in springtime. It's not just a baseball game, it's an historic event. The last baseball game ever in old Comiskey Park. Get set as Sports Channel brings you the finale at the house on 35th Street, Sunday, September 30th, as the thrilling conclusion to our weekend-long Comiskey Fest. Live coverage begins at 11, with two and a half hours of interviews and special reports on the ballpark leading up to the final game. And you won't want to miss the special Sports Channel tent in Armour Park, just north of Comiskey, on the final day. Stop by Sunday morning after 11, watch our live programming, and enjoy some free refreshments. It's the last day at Comiskey with Sports Channel, brought to you in part by Coca-Cola and True Value. Right in the middle of your screen, number 79, is the man who blocked the punt or the field goal, I should say, Aaron Christian. Let's watch him come off the ball. Good timing, 79. He'll be coming right up to me. Look how high he goes. Now, this guy, good size, 6'5", 255 pounds, goes high in the air, gets that left hand out and knocks it down, swats it away. There he is right there, 79, Aaron Christian. Out of La Mesa, California. The only returning starter on their defensive line, a very strong and physical player by Terry Shea. I can hear him just now talking about his kicking team. He opened it up this week. Brought in some people to challenge De Floor, but nobody could beat him out. He's had four kicks blocked. Very short pickup here for Marvin Eastman. The rover back, Anthony Washington, has him immediately under tackle. There's Anthony, number 13, a sophomore out of Pasadena. Key for the Rebels now is going to get some type of uh, establishment of their ground game. What they want to do is stay on the field as long as possible. Do not allow San Jose to to get their football team on the field because they fear them from an offensive standpoint. So they want to control the ball game. We'll probably see 60% running, 40% passing. May go as high as 70, 30, depending on the outcome of the ball game. Second and nine. Stott backpedaling, setting up the screen. It is caught out there by Hunky Cooper. There's the backup quarterback that will do everything. We saw him earlier running back a punch. They'll use him out of the backfield. They'll run him. They may even run him at quarterback to run their option, Jack. This guy is a tremendous athlete. And again, not a big guy, 5'9", 178 pounds. Can, but Hunky Cooper can do it all. He's just a tremendous athlete, averaging 156 yards a game in all-purpose yardage. Use him, utilizing him here on the screen. He gets outside, gets up underneath the inside safety. Doug Calgagno picks up a couple extra yards. And he picks up 10 yards there for the UNLV first down. First and 10 from their own 32. We have 5.50 to play in this first quarter. No score. They give it up the middle to Marvin Eastman. Eastman, the leading returning rusher for the Rebels. Very physical punishing runners we're seeing. Last week had 95 yards and a couple of touchdowns in their shocking win at Corvallis. What a strange ball game that was. They won that game 45 to 20. They trailed the game 14-12 at halftime. But Oregon State back to start the second half, turned the ball over six consecutive times on fumbles, and they turned it into points. Five touchdowns and a field goal to beat them. And but they missed six extra points in the course of that ball game. And that has Coach Jim Strong definitely concerned. Second and seven. That shuffle pass again. Eastman is immediately hit by Steve Heber, and he is tackled. That play worked earlier to McGowan's, but this time the Spartans have it well played. Yeah, Heber stayed at home on the last play. Read it very well. 219-pound senior out of Glendale, California. Looking to the sideline right now. You look out, and what he's doing is, is getting the signal sent in from the defensive coordinator, Donnie Ray. That's part of his responsibility in filling in for Everett Lampkins. Lampkins was the guy that 
was the signal caller on the defense. Third down and seven. The Rebels from their 35-yard line. And that good pressure. He's going deep up the field. It's underthrown. It's out of bounds. No catch. Trying to go to McGowan's. As the Spartans doing a very good job defending Keenan McCardle. We have not seen him at all of the ball game. Number 84. All of the passes to the wide receivers have gone and from Stout to McGowan's. Tell you what, a nice job too. You had a step on Doug Calgagno, but he came back inside and, and closed the gap down. Excellent play by Calgagno. Rebels must punt again on the fourth and seven. Luis Solorio, a senior out of Torrance, California. Born in Mexico City. There's the punt away to Hess Cola. Set it on the ground. It's and he's 23. A lot of room to run. He's on his feet. And he turns the corner. He may go all the way. 35. A flag is down, though. He is going to go in for a touchdown, but a flag it's is lying at the 24-yard the line. But there's a penalty flag back on the 23-yard line. Cola is just now getting the news. This one, you would presume, is coming back. Well, I'll tell you all, what a great job. And again, last week he came in and returned some punts, averaging 11.6 per return. Now, on a punt return, that's excellent. You can average five, six yards. That's okay. That's good. But 11.6, tell you what, a nice job. And he uh, he's tired right now. He's going to take his time going back to the sidelines. Boy, that is going to be a long walk back for Hesh Kolar. Last week, his first collegiate appearance as a punt returner. Returned eight footballs, tying a San Jose State record. He had 91 yards total. That's the most they have had since 87, and he almost just popped one for a long return and a very good return. He did it all in that return, Jack. He had some pressure. He showed good balance and good speed. Flipping during the run back. First down. And that is the second time in two punt returns the Spartans have clipped. Let's see if we can pick it up. Here comes Kolar now. He switches the ball into his left hand, cuts right up the middle. I'll tell you, he went through a maze of bodies. I didn't see it. Do we see it here? No, I don't see anything there. Now he's off to the races. Getting a little bit of an escort down the sideline. You'll see number five come in, or number six, I should say, for UNLV. It's a little bit too late. That was Freddie Smith, number four, who was helping him get in, but it was only for fun. Does not count. We have four minutes to play, first quarter. The best way to appreciate the all new 1991 Buick Regal Sports Sedan is to take a ride around the block, the engine block. You'll discover Buick's available 3800 V6 with tune port injection for more horsepower than the engines in any other street to own this block. Right now, drive a 1991 Regal at 1990 prices. Get the facts. Buick is better. First year head coach of the Spartans, Terry Shea, who grew up in San Jose, was this club's offensive coordinator 84 through 86, and he had some good years. They went 18, 15, and one during that time, including in 86. They won the conference, went all the way to the California Raisin Bowl and won that. Great guy. I had a chance to spend some time this afternoon with him in his hotel, and he's really looking forward and excited about this season. And he's excited about Sheldon Candley, his tailback. The clock will, the clock will roll as he is out of bounds at the 15-yard line following a very short gain. He has said, we're not a good enough passing team consistently to win. We feel that we have to get it from Sheldon Candley, who was an electrifying runner. I'm going to put the ball in his hands a lot more. But you know what? That's interesting because I read the same quote, but talking to him today, he wants to throw the football and he wants to throw it deep. Now we've seen him do it. Here he pitches to Candley. Candley's eighth first quarter carry. He is rocked. Carlton Johnson, number one, and along with Dave Pappas, I think yes. they've gotten in there and gotten a, a free lick, too. Number 97, uh -huh. Pappas with the hit. We'll watch it again. Again, Canley, the man of the moment. Now, he is the, the workhorse for the San Jose State team. Let's see the hits coming in. Right there is number one, Carlton Johnson. Takes him down, and, oh, oh, man, a little bit late coming in the back door. Is 97, Dave Pappas. Third down and five. From their own 18-yard line, 2.50 to play in a scoreless first quarter. Martini has the first down to Bobby Blackman, and then he is shoved out of bounds by Charles Anthony. 
First time they have thrown the ball to Bobby Blackman, the junior out of Alameda. Martini does not have one favorite receiver. He likes to spread it around. Blackman is number 80. He's the guy in motion, and he will be basically the safety valve pass. Watch him turn up the field, drive, and then just hook up. He'll hook up right there. He's the ball control receiver. That's his 14th catch of the season, averaging 10 and a half yards a pop. So he doesn't go deep a whole lot of times, but he's right in around that first down area, the tough yards, the tough areas to make the catches, and that's where he does his best work. That's his 14th catch of this season. He leads the club. Here's Candley again. And he is getting a tremendous line surge. Out to the 35-yard line. A gain of about seven before number 55. Ramon Hilton. The freshman linebacker. They call him Mad Dog. But obviously what we're seeing, Jack, is that San Jose State has their top line people back. Number 72, Anthony Gallegos, who has missed up until this point, Yosef is back. He didn't play. And they feel they can really go at this team up front. Exactly. And they're so far they're having uh, having a good night. First down again for Candley out across the 40 yard line. Candley is not meeting any resistance till he's about three or four yards across the line of scrimmage. Well, they're just eating up. When I say they, I'm talking about the offensive line of San Jose State. They're just eating up the young defensive line for the Rebels of UNLV. Again, remember Mansfield Dinkins, who's in there as a pure freshman. He's big, number 64, 293, but he's a pure freshman. Clock is rolling down, just 155 to play in the first quarter. Greg Pop and Jack Snow from the Sam Boyd Silver Bowl here in Las Vegas. They expect about 18,000 tonight. Missio Barbosa drops the ball, but in part he heard Carlton Johnson coming to lay that hick, uh, lick on him. He really popped him. Yeah, he knew he was there. You'll watch 29 come out of the backfield. And then Johnson again, number one. We talked about him in pregame. He loves to hit. He reads it very well and comes in there and hits him low. He takes down a big guy, too. Nice job on the part of Carlton Johnson. Second down and 10. Carlton Johnson last year, an honorable mention, all Big West player with 53 tackles. Second and 10 from the 42. They hand it off to Sheldon Candley. Still on his feet, and he is very near to the first down across the 50-yard line. What we are seeing from Candley early is a tremendous ability to break tackles. Well, I'll tell you what, maybe as the season wears on, this kid gets better because he should have been down, and the one thing he did not do, he kept, he didn't stop his legs and, and start to go down with the tackle. He kept him driving, broke free of a tackle, picked up about a good another five to six yards. He has now become the Spartans' career all-purpose running leader with that last 10-yard pickup, passing 10 points. Martini under pressure, and it's intercepted! Brian Chomko with a nice job reading the pass route. The ball definitely underthrown on the part of Ralph Martini. He had a receiver in behind Chomko, but Chomko playing the zone that he's responsible for. Excellent execution defensively. You look at 19, he'll be up in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see him float and slide to the outside. Martini, he's got to drop it in over the top of him. He can't do it. He was going for Walter Brooks Jr. He comes up short. Brian Chomko makes his first interception this year. Big play for the junior free safety. And there goes Martini's streak. He was 69 seconds away from taking it through 10 quarters without an interception. Here's the backup quarterback, Hunky Cooper, in upfield and is caught. And it's Ricardo going in for a touchdown. Pass from the new quarterback, Hunky Cooper. And the first time they look to McCardle, he makes a big play. We talked about what a great skilled athlete he is to watch him lay the ball out there. And remember, McCardle has been hurt from all in the first quarter, but now he is 58 yards, beats everybody. He's eight yards behind the secondary of San Jose State. Big play for UNLV. That is McCardle's fifth touchdown of this season. Last week, he had three scores. And they win over Washington State. He is the complete package, they say. A hard worker, good speed and moves, and he has outstanding hands. It is six to nothing with a minute to play in the first quarter. Boy, this game changed immediately. Two big plays back to back. Garrett Stott, the quarterback who just left the game. Number 11 is not going to hold here for Todd Amron. They have had a tremendous problem making PATs. He's one for four personally, and he missed that. 
Wow. Can you believe that? He is one for five on PATs. As a group this year, they have made just two of ten PATs, Jack. They are an embarrassing one for six yeah. on point afters kicking this year. That's unbelievable. Now let's watch the snap and watch the hole. See if it's a smooth snap. Let's see if the holder gets the ball down a little bit inside. Then he drops now. That's not totally the fall of the kicker. The holder's got to make a cleaner reception from the center on that. It appeared to be a good snap by David Clark, but Derek Stott, the quarterback who just left the ball game in favor of Cooper, did not get that ball in time for Amrit. Let's take another look at the first pass of the ball game for Hernandez Hunky Cooper. Hunky Cooper avoids a rush, ducks underneath, and just seems to flick that ball out there. Now look how far McCardle is behind everybody. They can't, they, well, I tell you, somebody blew an assignment right there. You cannot have an outside receiver sneak in behind you that by that much. That's, that's just bad. And the ironic thing is that Keenan McCardle had not even come into our screen before that catch. I mean, they weren't even going near him. The Spartans had him completely covered. How would he possibly break that far open of the secondary for that play? Well, I think what was happening is that San Jose State was looking for somewhat of maybe a little bit of an option on the part of Hunky Cooper. They didn't give it to him. He dropped back and threw a nice long pass to his favorite receiver, Keenan McCardle. That is Hunky Cooper's second touchdown pass this year. He is now three for five. If you're wondering about the name Hunky, and I was earlier this week. It was given to him by his older sister when he was just a child. Gabe Smith, number one, is back deep to take this kick, kick from uh, Mendoza. But it's Sheldon Candy, number 20, who will return it again out across the 20. He's down to the 21-yard line. A penalty flag is down. Well, you would hardly classify it as a drive. It took one play for Cooper to throw his 58-yard pass to Keenan McCardle. 58 yards immediately following the interception when Brian Chomko had one thrown his way by Ralph Martini. We have an injured Spartan leaving the field. Craig Latsoffer, number 38, a sophomore. Safety leaves, and there is Martini. Also have another penalty on the return. It's a penalty that will drive them back inside their 10-yard line. This will start their drive at their own 7 yard line. Again, the penalty is really a problem for San Jose State. Yeah, I think so. You don't want them to stall drive or put you in the hole. Right now, they're in the hole again. Martini, almost 10 full quarters out without being intercepted. Last pass he was. And now, deep in their own territory, the Rebels come swarming. Chuck Reed, number 99, hits Candley quickly. First quarter clock shows 37 seconds. It's a spot right here, Greg, where you can turn the defense loose. They haven't had a whole lot of success, even though that they've been going deep. They being San Jose State. Bring a couple of those linebackers, put some heat on. Let's see what happens. San Jose State maybe want to keep the ball on the ground and sneak out of here in the second quarter if they can. They move Walter Brooks Jr. in motion number 83. It is dropped again by Maceo Barbosa. That is the second football that he has dropped in this first quarter. Barbacio, <laughs> Barbacio, Maceo Barbosa normally exhibits much better hands than that with five catches coming into the game, and that ball was right there. And what happens to a receiver is he turns up the field and starts to run before he can make the catch. You look at a Mike Jordan signaling in the offensive set and the play call. He gets it from Terry Shea, and he signals it in. He may want to uh, take you up on that, Jack. Combine his first and last name and <laughs> go with the one name. will be a star. 16 seconds to play in the first quarter. They hand it off to Sheldon Cantley, and he has the first down, and a lot more. He may go all the way. Let's see what kind of speed he has. He is finally under tackle by number 17, Tony Dilly. But a big run by Sheldon Cantley. 52-yard pickup. Watch what happens to David Efferson, the left cornerback for UNLV. He'll come from the left side. He sees Canley exploding through. Now watch the move he puts on two guys right there. You got eight. That's David Efferson and Carlton Johnson going the opposite way when he turns around and makes his break. Thank goodness for Tony Dilly to come in and slow him down and take him down. 
Again, we get a shot of Carlton Johnson right there. He's coming into force. We saw he and David Everson both coming in hard, but Canley with that great quickness bounces back That's to the, the outside before he's finally brought down by Tony Dilly. And with the quick step up by Carlton Johnson, he gets burned there. Sheldon Canley, big pickup. But after one quarter, it is Las Vegas six and the Spartans nothing. It. How do you react? It's Chevrolet Sportsfire every week right here on Sports Channel. Sports Channel is the home of the seven-day sports weekend. We've got gridiron coverage of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Canadian Football League. The Iceman reign supreme with our exclusive coverage of the National Hockey League, the U.S. Olympic Showcase, the High School Game of the Week, Speedway Sunday, the Pro Boxing Tour, and much more sizzling professional and amateur sports 365 days a year. The seven-day sports weekend is here, only on Sports Channel. Well, over at the casinos today here in Las Vegas, they had San Jose State as an 11-point favorite to beat Nevada Las Vegas. But in the first quarter, it is the Rebels on top six to nothing, despite the fact that San Jose State has moved the ball a lot better with one big play to pass by Cooper to McCardle. First and ten from the Rebel 41. He overthrows Sheldon Canley, Martini does. Read nicely by Reese Thomas, the linebacker. Martini sitting back there as long as he can, trying to draw the rush in on him and then dump it, dump it to the outside to Canley, but uh, again, smelled out very nicely by Reese Thomas, freshman linebacker. Last season, Martini began as the Spartans' number two quarterback, but he finished up as the starter in two of the last three games. He was in a bit of a quarterback battle with Matt Beach, who was redshirted this year. Here's Barbosa turning the corner. He has the first down, and he's inside the 20-yard line, down to the 23, before the two safety men, Johnson and Anthony, push him out of bounds. We talked about Barbosa having the ability to run out of the eye spot or as a tailback. He's got great quickness. You see a nice read run, gets the official out of his way. Straight arms, one defender, then turns it upfield, looking for another block from his outside wide receiver, David Blakes. That was a 17-yard pickup. There are your first quarter numbers, 148 total yards for San Jose State, 111 rushing, mostly by Sheldon Candley. He's probably neared, if not over, 100 yards personally. So it is a bit deceptive that Las Vegas has this 6-0 lead. Candley has the football, and he takes it across the 20-yard line for a pickup of about five yards. Good job by the left side of the offensive line. Chad Emall and Pat Hines. Pat Hines the returning starter. Excellent blocker. And Canley reads him very, very well. Remember Chad Emall? We sang happy birthday to his mom last week up in Stockton. And I heard from Lawrence Fan, the brilliant sports information director at San Jose State, that his mother, she's just such a big fan of yours now, Jack. Here's Canley, already 124 yards. What a quarter he is having, a quarter in a minute. We're just a minute into the second quarter. He has 125 yards rushing. Just hope they don't run him in the ground. Oh, he's man. carrying that ball almost every other down when they're not passing, and he's taking uh, taking a, a lot of pounding early in this ball game. The uh, guy's trying to drill him in the ground is Carlton Johnson. Candley last year over 1,200 yards. Five times he was over 100. First time this year came last week when he ran for 110 yards on 31 carries. But again, 65 of those 110 came in the fourth quarter. This is second down, or third down and two. Third down and two. And yeah, they're going to be close. Mansfield Dixon, or Dinkins, I should say, like the mayor of New York, Dinkins. He is the tackler. We have a flag down, though, and a hold against San Jose State. Tell you what, the officials throw those flags too high. Those babies will sail right out of the stadium. I can't see them down because it is rather windy here this evening. I don't see a flag on the field. But obviously, our man Jack Gatto threw one. Look at how windy it is. There's a flag on the field. <laughs> There's a flag above the field. Very patriotic group we have here in Las Vegas. They have an American flag all the way around the circumference of this stadium. Offense, repeat third down. So the third and two. 
Now becomes a third and 12 as they push them back to the 26 yard line. Takes the inside handoff. Martini throws it out here for Candley. He is short of the first down. He is down to the 14 yard line. He is very close. We'll have to wait possibly and see David Epperson it. Left corner makes the tackle. See what he got popped but he was so wide open coming out of the backfield again somebody blowing an assignment it may have been Ramon Hilton the freshman inside backer for UNLV. You can't let that back come out into the flat that wide open you got to have somebody on him. Now we're going to see Terry Shea go for it here on fourth and one partly because he is confident in his offensive line but also equally not confident in his kicking game. We'll see if they run to the left side. Now a little quick pitch to the right. Candley has the first down and he may have a touchdown. He does. Sheldon Candley ties the game at six. 15 yard touchdown run on the fourth and one. This time they go off the right side. Good block by Yosefa. Anthony Gallegos on the right guard spot and Mike Bender, the offensive center, create a huge hole and again, super job of running by Sheldon Canley. Sneaks in behind, picks up not only the first down, but a touchdown. And a lot of times you'll see that on a fourth and short, not only the first down being picked up, but the whole thing. Now with 12.33 to play in the first half, we are tied. De La Fleur, who had a field goal attempt blocked earlier out of the hold of Mike Jordan. And he makes a extra point, which is certainly a story here in Las Vegas. And he gives the Spartans the lead. 12.33 to play. There's Canley, the touchdown maker. He has the Spartans on top by a point. There are over $375,000 in cash prizes waiting for you in the Sometime Social Security sweepstakes. Look for your winning number every day in Chicago's number one selling newspaper, the Chicago Sun-Times. 43 over got big stay, right? Don't let him out, man. This is the Canadian Football League. Hard-hitting pro football. And there's only one place where you can see it live and exclusive. <laughs> First look this year at the Bulldogs on the Big West game of the week. Dana Flores' kick is taken to the end zone by Hunky Cooper, and he downs it. Sheldon Candley on that touchdown drive carried the ball for 74 yards. Yeah, you were number one. There's no question that as you look at the San Jose State scoring drive, seven plays, 93 yards, three minutes, 21 seconds, and Canley goes in from 15 yards out. Canley also had an 11-yard reception, so he alone accounted for 85 of the 93 yards on that drive. Funky Cooper. He's ready to roll. Last time he touched the football, the only time he has touched it as the quarterback, he threw a 58-yard touchdown pass to McCardle. Now he hands it up. Hands it off inside for a short gain. Number three, Derek Black. First time we're seeing the junior come into the ball game. He is going to alternate at fullback tonight with Marvin Eastman. It was a short gain. Well, Derek Stott, we talked about him, the starting quarterback, more of a pocket passer, but will run. But Hunky Cooper, I'll tell you what, he is more of the gifted athlete, can do more things. This may be a statement simply that they need more of an athletic quarterback to play against the Spartans defensively. Yeah, if they want to try and run a little bit of the option, they've got a guy that can, that can turn a small gain into a big one. There's the rush by Burnham. Cooper immediately using his athleticism, but it is short-lived as he is drilled down by Steve Heber. Number 48, Charles Burnham put the original pressure on him to flush him immediately out of the pocket. Derek Stott from the sidelines with the pot still on is watching now as the second string quarterback Cooper is playing. Jim Strong right there on the right, the coach with the baseball cap on. He's a fire eater. He's a young guy full of uh, vinegar and he wants to get going and create a new positive atmosphere here, atmosphere here at UNLV. Last 12 years an assistant in Arkansas, Tulsa, Minnesota, and Notre Dame. So he followed Lou Holtz around there to Arkansas, Minnesota, and to South Bend. Cooper showing off his arm, and it dropped. Keenan McCardle had the football, and he simply dropped it. But again, he got wide open deep what, in their backfield. He makes that catch. That's another touchdown, and that one goes for about 82 yards on that play. 
And that's what happens when receivers break so wide open they cannot see any other colored jersey around them. Sometimes you get a little bit afraid because you're so wide open you, you lose your concentration. I think that's what happened right there. So we'll see Celorio again, the senior. He has not had a good year of punting consistently. Hesh Kolar, number 25, steps up from his 47. He comes. A flag down again against San Jose State. Every time they have returned to punt, this being number three, they have been guilty of flipping. The tackle there was made by number six, Rodney Crozier, but uh, Terry Shea wants to yank that forward out. He has to be frustrated with the amount of sloppiness on his special teams. Yeah, I think so. And again, you don't want a, a clipping penalty on a decent run back there. They had the ball at about the 50, what the plus side of the 50, what the 47, 48 yard line of, of UNLV. And fortunately, they're going to get it back down around their 35, 36 yard line. Clipping, receiving team during the run back. First down. And they battled the uh, special teams really gives away a lot of the battle that the defense has won Jack because the defense is so strong it is consistently giving you good drive starts but the special teams keeps knocking you back 15 yards. Yeah they kill you and you don't want that to happen. Seven to six San Jose State quick dump out here for Byron Jackson across the 40 the 45 yard line he may have the first down. Carlton Johnson pushed him out of bounds. Well let's check out the National League West race the Dodgers Beginning play with a three and a half game deficit on the Reds. No score at Dodger Stadium in the third. They hammered the Giants last night 16 to three. The Reds also hammered the Padres last night. Game one of two. It is five to four they lead in the ninth inning. They may be handing it over to their nasty boys. Nice catch here by Gary Charlton. On the first down in 10. Kenneth Crump, number 26, a reserve linebacker, makes the tackle on Charlton. The Chicago White Sox and the Mariners, an active first inning in the Kingdom. They are tied at two. And the Oakland A's won their ball game today, five to one behind Scott Sanderson at the Oakland Coliseum. So the magic number is now down to two. If Chicago loses that ball game, the magic number would go down to one of the A's tomorrow to clinch the American League West for their third consecutive year. And for those of you watching on Sports Channel Bay Area, we'll have it for you. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the Coliseum, Mike Moore will pitch for the A's against veteran Jack Morris. We may be breaking out some bubbly tomorrow. Another flag down on that last play. San Jose starting to walk back towards their goal line, so you may think that uh, they may feel it was against them, maybe a holding call. Well, it is a safe assumption the way they have been penalized so far in this football game. Here's the definitive word. Illegal shift on the offense. Repeat, second down. It was second and nine. That'll bring up a second down and 14. We have 10 minutes and one second. To play in this first half, Greg Pop alongside Jack Snow watching Terry Shea's San Jose State Spartans. And right now we're watching him chew out some of his people. Yeah, when those headphones come off like that, he's upset. Draw to Sheldon Candley. He cannot be upset with, with what this man is doing. He is playing fabulous football. On the second and 14, he picks up about 10 yards out to the uh, 43 or so. Uh, watch, the, the, watch the skittering and the jumping after he takes a little delayed draw, a couple of good blocks, reads it nice. It'll bump to the left, cuts back to the right. He does that so well, so quick. His feet stay right close to the ground, which enables his to, him to break back and forth, left to right, right to left. An outstanding runner. 13 more for Candley brings up a third down and two. It is caught by Barbosa. First down yardage. He is down to the UNLV 38-yard line. Let me tell you something now. I don't know if we had that on replay, but this guy has got to be tough to sell Barbosa because normally when, when you watch where he hits after he makes the catch, most guys are going to make the catch, 
head for the sideline, get away from the traffic. Now watch where he goes after he makes the catch. Let me hit somebody. Oh, there they are. Let's go back inside where I can deliver a blow. Unbelievable. Tough kid. Well, I, I said he him. was a slash fullback tailback. He's showing off his fullback I'll, skills. Yes, there, you Jim. bet. I love him. He's tough. Mansfield Dinkins, number 64. A freshman is walking off the field under his own power. But he is being escorted. Yeah, maybe a shoulder. He's holding that right arm kind of down to his side. Maybe a little bit of a pinched nerve or, or something. He's a big one, too. And that's a big blow. He is the most heralded of all the new recruits. Named one of the top 100 incoming freshmen by the Sporting News. There's a pitch to Candley on the first and 10. He will not get much. He is driven down nicely by Tyrone Starks. Number 44, the backup linebacker, the senior from right here in Las Vegas. Starks doing a good job of reading it. Coming across the line of scrimmage, he's the outside guy, not real big for a linebacker, 210 pounds, but runs extremely well. A senior, so his play will be limited this year. He wants to make every opportunity that it presents itself, he wants it to be a good one. Last year, he sat out the year. This is his first year after coming from Purdue. Second down and 12, two yard loss. Here's Barbosa. Out near the first down, he rips off about 12, 13 more. Again, running in behind the left side of that offensive line, Chad Emall and Pat Hines doing a great job over there. Walling off to the outside, cracking down to the inside, creating the hole. There's big 73, Chad Emall. Makes his block and hits downfield, tries to get himself another one. Nice job, Chad. They are going to bring out the chains and measure. It is a deceptive score. Seven to six, San Jose State. But Terry Shea has to be feeling good inside as he talks to his coaches upstairs, Jack, because his team is completely dominating this football game. Outside of one big play, uh, the pass by Cooper to McCardle, his team is owning this game. Exactly right. They do own the defense for UNLV. They do anything they want. That will, it seems to be, especially in this second quarter and towards the end of the first quarter, what they've got to do now is take control of it and take it away from that guy right there, Jim Strong, keep his defense out on the field, don't let his offense get there and score some points. First couple of weeks in losing, uh, Strong's defense gave up an average of 457 yards, but last week much better. There's a good pop, and the ball is broken up. David Epperson, the left cornerback, really drove a helmet and a shoulder into Bobby Blackman. Watch the arrival of the defensive cornerback, David Epperson, as the ball comes to receiver number 80. Watch the timing. Epperson reads it. Here comes the ball to Blackman. He's got his hands on it, one half of a step, and boy, that's what you call a good job of separating the ball from the receiver. Heck of a play by David Epperson. His nickname, Jack, is uh, Dr. Dent. Dr. Dent. just found out why. Here's <laughs> Sheldon Candley. You see him hold the football. That's one thing Nevada Las Vegas is very proficient at. It's something that Jim Strong teaches to strip the football. They have recovered nine opponents' fumbles the first three weeks. They were trying to get it away from Canley there. Yeah, that's right. And you reach that hand in there and try and strip that ball as the runner goes by. But again, nice job reading the block, cutting it back up inside. See number one right there, Johnson. Gets that hand out there, but Canley so strong, pulls it away from him, tucks it back into his gut. They're going to measure again on this second down and 10 carry. Canley almost got the full 10. If not, in fact, he did get it. And it's first down. Sheldon Canley with about 150 yards rushing. He is somewhere in that vicinity. We have him now for 161 yards unofficially on 17 carries. He is having a tremendous... But we only have 7 minutes half. and 22 seconds to go in the first half, though, so Greg. <laughs> he may win the Big West Player of the Week award in the first half tonight, Jack. He may very well. 7-11 to play in the half. Canley... He was driven down by number 26, Kenneth Crump, a freshman from Fort Worth, Texas, laying his body into Sheldon Candley. He wears those big shoulder pads, Candley, only 5'8", 193 yards, 193 pounds. 193 yards is getting close to. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. 200, 200 yards maybe before the first half comes to, uh, comes to a conclusion. He got five on that last carry, so now 166 he has. Spartans trying to go in the end zone. It was laid out there, but not caught. He was trying to go to Bobby Blackman, but Charles Anthony was ready to tattoo him. 
the, that ball was there, but I think what happened is Blackman looked up to look for the football, and he saw Anthony and kind of took his eyes off the football, put him onto the receiver. Great pass, though, on the part of the quarterback, Ralph Martini. Here's Blackman. He knows he should have made the catch, too. He comes off shaking his head. When you do that as a receiver, you say, hey, the ball was there. I should have made the catch. He's one-fifth of the Spartan Young Guns this year. Five new brand-wide receivers, all juniors. He's got to get a brand-new helmet. They've scuffed it up on him. Yeah, they have. A little play pass under pressure, and it's overthrown. They got some good activity there. Kenneth Trump, number 26, applied some pressure. He was trying for Gary Charlton. Again, Martini cannot get them in the end zone once they get inside the opponent's 20-yard line. They had the receiver isolated man-to-man -man on the outside, and that's where he wanted to go, but there was a lot of pressure up the middle, and he just didn't have time to set and fire that ball properly. They are not getting it done inside the red zone, as they call it. Mike Jordan will hold, and Raul De La Flor, who has had one block, will try. Flags fly. Now, that's a fourth and five. So a offsides against Las Vegas could give them an automatic first down. And they're pointing that way, Jeff. Yeah, it's going to be close. You got to get down to what? Just about the eight-yard line inside the eight? Well, let's see who the penalty is on first. Spartans are saying for once it is not us. And Jack Gatto agrees. <laughs> yeah. Jim Strong is obviously upset. This could give the Spartans an automatic first down. Which is the last thing that Jim Strong wants right now, to give them the ball. The way they've been driving it, you don't want to give them four more shots at a touchdown. Well, they'll mark off the five. And then they'll have to measure, I believe. Talking to Ronald Cooper, the defensive coordinator and outside linebacker coach, the man on your right with the headphones on. Look at all of his coaching staff. They're all in their first year here at UNLV. So it's a young staff, new terminology. You know, it's a honeymoon period. They've got to work with these kids, establish some rapport, and, uh, and start from ground, ground zero and build this program back up. We have offsides. It has not changed the down, but what it has done is make it a fourth down and inches, and it will change the philosophy of Tershe because now he has decided to go for it. He is not going to bring in his suspect field goal team. He's going to try and ram it down their throats here. And why not? The way his offensive line is moving people away, they should be able to make this first down. Martini keeps it himself, and he rolls for a first down. Good line search. Exactly correct. A nice job by the offensive line. The right side, Anthony Gallegos and Penai Yosefa doing a super job. And all Martini does take the snap and get in behind him. Well, before the game, Jim Strong was saying, we're going to have to play an exceptional game just to be on the field with them. And we're going to get hint to the physical domination that San Jose State is laying on Las Vegas. But they're only up 7-6. 6-13 and rolling to play in the first half. Maceo Barbosa taking it inside the five, a late strip, but I believe he was down. Las Vegas is saying they have the football, and the, now the official, one official says they do, but the other official is saying, no, they were down. Yeah, I think he's going to be called down. The ball's going to be ruled down. The knee was touching, so what happens if the knee touches the ground and you fumble after you go down, it doesn't count. The ball's dead. Well, as we know, the ground cannot cause a fumble. It is still... Spartan football from the four-yard line. They bring in some double tight ends here. Bryce Burnett will line up alongside Rich Sarlot. It is a second down and goal from the Rebel four-yard line. They bring in Blair Zer, number 44, give the football, and he bangs it down close to the goal line. Blair Zer, who was applauded by Terry Shea this week for being an outstanding blocker last year, Week, especially in the fourth quarter when Cantley took the game over on the ground. He is a junior out of uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I want to say that that may be his first carry of this 1990 season, too, because I couldn't find him in his stats anywhere. Well, that is. You are right. When we come back, it'll be a big third down and goal for the Spartans from the one-yard line. When it comes to automobile... UNLV just called a timeout. 
They only have one remaining in the half, but now they face a big play. Third down and goal for the Spartans from the one. Candley dives in for a touchdown. Sheldon Candley, who has been doing it on the ground, now does it through the air. And San Jose State takes a 13-6 lead. Nothing fancy about this. Give the ball to your best runner. Have him just go right up over the top. Watch the ball. Crosses a plane. Ball's on a pile again. Excellent job by that offensive line of burying a very young Rebel defensive line. Sheldon Candley scored a couple of touchdowns last week in our Big West game of the week. It stocked in. That is his second of the ball game tonight. He scored earlier on a 15-yard run. Now he dives in from one. And Raul De La Flor. Out of Peru, a fall walk-on will try and tack on another point, and he drills it out of the hold of Mike Jordan. And San Jose State is now beginning to dominate this football game on the scoreboard the way they are on the stat sheet. We have 5-19 to play in the half. They lead it 14-6. Jeff Chase, your host, each week on the Tennis Magazine Show. We've got all that and much more right here on the station. Yes, Mom is proud, and he has reason to be smiling. Sheldon Candley is dominating this football game. Here is his second touchdown moments ago from one yard away. Watch the surge of the offensive line. They bury everybody in red. You see him go right up over the top. Nobody's standing up. Again, excellent job by the offensive line of the Spartans. Sheldon Candley <laughs> has rushed for 167 yards already. Last week, he had 110. First couple of weeks, he struggled. Louisville only at 82 yards, and Washington just 61. And Terry Shea was concerned about his running game. He was concerned about it through three quarters last week. Well, he is not concerned the first two this week. Here's Hunky Cooper again, and oh man, is he hit very hard and well. Solid tackle there by number 39 of the Spartans, Paul Hamilton. A backup rover back. Hunky got blasted, and he's walking off the field. He is not going to court. No, he's going back in. He's a bit, well, he's going off. He's confused he got popped so hard here, Jack. We'll take another peek at it again. This guy is very gifted athlete. He's on all the special return teams, punt return, kickoff return. He takes a shot right mm. there. Good shoulder into the hips, and that's why you see his body turn a little bit like a pretzel. Heck of a job. He may have a little bit of a hip problem right here. Derek Stott has come back in. He ran this club the first few series unsuccessfully, and then they brought in Cooper. He threw a touchdown pass, and now Stott is immediately under tackle by Steve Heber. The linebacker was blitzing on that play, and you cannot get quicker penetration. That was incredible. There's the scoring drive. 64-yard drive. Took him five and a half minutes. And Candley scores his second touchdown. What a uh, methodical drive there. 18 plays they ran. Shoot up, 5.33. Just the way you diagram it, the way you draw it up, it's in your game plan. Second down and 18, following that eight-yard quarterback sack by Heber. Nobody to pitch it to. Number three, Derek Black started to go to the right, and Derek Stott was looking left to pitch it to, and he got buried down by Charles Burnham. Let's update the baseball. We have a final score from Jack Murphy Stadium. The Reds win game one, six to four. And the Dodgers are tied with the Giants. No score through uh, into the fifth inning. So the Dodgers now fall four games behind the Reds, pending the outcome of those two ball games yet to play. The second game in San Diego and the second half of that ball game at Dodger Stadium. Can you believe how many games the Dodgers have lost after blowing some tremendous leads, at least a dozen? 
Derek Stott and the Rebels are going to stop play again. That's their last time out of the first half. They need it. Down eight points. As a Sox fan, you'd probably love to have a piece of old Comiskey Park to remember it by. But please, don't take items from the park. The White Sox are going to sell seats and other memorabilia to fans after the season. All proceeds will go to the Chicago White Sox charities to help seriously ill patients in their fight for health. And many other needy charities as well. Help us raise money for charity. Don't steal from the park. You'd not only be hurting a worthy cause, you'd be breaking the law. And, and you, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to do, do that, that now, now, would, would you? you? Third down at 20. The Rebels only have two first downs tonight. Derek Stott was drilled there. Big tackle by the right tackle, Mike Powers. He even he got in there. They didn't even uh, get a linebacker or a DB on him. It was one of their linemen that sacked him. Mike Powers out of Cupertino, 247 pounds. You see him run right over the left guard center. Just comes right back in and just smothers a quarterback, Derek Stott. You got to get better blocking out of the left side of that offensive line if you want to get any type of, type of an offense going. Another punt. Saloriar has it bounced. Nestola steps up, and he is driven down there by Carlton Johnson. Carlton, the doorman, ringing his bell. Nice pop there. Nestola will jog off. We have 3-11 to play in the opening half. Jim Strong, his old mentor. Lou Holtz today, a tough ball game against a bunch of Spartans. And Jim Strong having a tough ball game with his bunch of Spartans out here on the West Coast, San Jose State. 14 to 6, they lead with 3-11 to play in the half. And the man that is doing most, that's a play action pass. Martini has the football, and now he throws it over to Barbosa, I believe. Talk about deception. Stacy Monroe makes the tackle. Candy, it looked like, had the football. A great Fake by Martini, and he wound up getting into the arms of Maceo Barbosa, the flyback. And Martini has the ability at times to fake with the left hand and hide that ball right on his right hip, which keeps it away from the view of a lot of the defensive people, in particular the linebackers and definitely the defensive backs. Barbosa coming out side to get a helmet adjustment. Look at those silver strips along the back. You can see right in the backside, that's from the silver of the other team's helmets. Here's Sheldon Canley on the second and one coming close to a first down. Well, part of the newness of the Spartans this year under the new coach Terry Shea is a change in their look. They have new helmets this year. They have new jerseys, a darker blue. For some reason last year their helmets was a different color than their jerseys. They were blue at home, so they had those repainted. Also have a new uh, insignia, new design of their helmet. Two oh seven to play in the half. It is complete to Burnett, the tight end, and he is dragged out of bounds by Ramon Hilton, number 55, the linebacker. Second time we've seen Bryce Burnett, the tight end, sneak across the field of play. Martini does a good job of staying with him all the way till he clears the last inside linebacker, gets into the flat. It's a foot race between he and Ramon Hilton. Hilton does a good job of making the tackle after the catch, but he can't stay with him. Nice job by that guy right there, staying with his primary receiver. And there you see a good look at the new helmets with the Spartan logo. They used to have uh, SJS lettering on their helmet. Here's Candley taking it inside the 10 of the first and 10. 155 and rolling. Aaron Christian, number 79, made the tackle. It is 14 to 6 San Jose State. So right now we are at a big crossroads in this football game. But the Spartans are able to punch across a third score, Jack. That's going to make it very tough. Because you don't want to come back against the Spartan defense the way they come attacking with the 46. Exactly. You don't want them to come out uh, in the second half. You want to be ahead to put up three scores to take lead. Sheldon Candley takes it back inside, getting very short yardage. So a third down will be brought up. David Efferson, number eight, made the tackle for the Rebel defense. He's got to be tired, don't you think? He has got to be a tired, one tired running back, number 20, Canley. Man, I'm just tired watching this you guy. Bet. He's getting the you ball bet. almost every single time. We have him for 22 carries, 174 yards. Third and six, play action pass. Martini 
Into the end zone he goes. It is caught for a touchdown. What a great catch by Bobby Blackman to get his feet in the end zone. It is 20 to 6, San Jose State. Blackman is the inside receiver. He'll be running a corner route. Now watch the job that Martini does and lets him clear along the back end zone line. Now watch the feet of Blackman. High in the air, boom, boom, right there. What a great catch. That's an all-pro catch that any professional receiver would love to make. What a great job by Bobby Blackman. In the NFL, you need both feet, but in college ball, you only need one, but he got both in. He's showing the scouts. Raul De La Flor for the third point after touchdown. And with 50 seconds to play in this first half, the San Jose State Spartans have a 21-6 lead over the Nevada Las Vegas Rebels. Let's take one more look at this pass. This is just such a great job by a receiver who frees himself up in the end zone after reading the coverage. Now watch the feet again. Watch the left foot come down first. No question, inbounds, mm. right foot right there with it. He's looking, what a great job. Concentrate on the ball, make the catch, and then drop those feet inbounds. Nice catch, youngster. There he is right there. You betcha, great catch. There's Bobby Blackman, the junior out of Alameda, who last year redshirted. First showed off his talents to Terry Shea in the spring game this year with a team-high five receptions. The transfer out of Bakersfield College. And also a nice pass there by Ralph Martini. He has not been passing the ball a lot in the ball game. They've been running Candley a lot. He made a bad play early in the game to get intercepted. But that was a nice, tight spiral. Got a lot on that football also. He did. And the amazing thing, or the good thing for Martini, was he read the defense. He knew where the opening would come. When he, when he saw it, he shot that ball in there. Heck of a job by the quarterback, Martini, and also a great catch by Blackman. Just 50 seconds to play in a first half completely dominated by San Jose State. Again, it is Hunky Cooper. Blair Zur is there to bear hug him after one of his coverage mates really popped him hard. Hunky Cooper has a, a hunky headache. 221 to play on the drive was. It was a seven-play drive. Only 35 yards. And it was capped off by Martini to Blackman. First time that Martini has thrown a touchdown pass tonight. First two scores were scored on the ground by Sheldon Candley. With 44 seconds to play, what will Derek Stott do? Well, it looks like he's going to lay down. He's going to have his chin strap on. I think he's going to kneel down here. He's going to play action and put it up. Chin strap or no, he pump fakes. Now he goes up for Cooper, and it's overthrown. Hunky Cooper tried to recover there on the coverage of Charles Thomas, number two. He came back to the football. It was underthrown. And as he recovered, the ball wound up going over his head. Yeah, look for a moment like that. He was going to make the catch for a moment. I thought he had a good chance to go up and grab that ball with both hands. But uh, that guy right there, number two, would not allow it. Charles Thomas, versatile defender in the backfield. He can play both safety and cornerback, senior. Second down and ten. First half coming to a close, and so is the room for Derek Scott. There's a late hit there by Steve Heber. No flag. Scott was already down when Heber put his helmet on uh, Stott's helmet. Clock stops, 22 seconds. Watch it right here. He takes off, tries to go to the outside. He gets knocked down. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. He takes a pop right there from Heber. They should have been flagged on that one. He should have flagged Heber. No need for that. Absolutely none at all. Jim Strong is falling that away in his memory. Six-yard quarterback sack. He has brought his quarterback over to talk here. Third down and 16. San Jose State has called timeout. UNLV and Strong are out of timeouts, but the Spartans called a timeout here to force them to punt the football one more time. It'll also probably give them an opportunity to take one more shot at the end zone if they do get the ball back say they don't block the punt but they're going to try and block the punt you can be certain I would think so yeah it's going to be third down about 15 14 15 and a half yards so what they want to do here is force them to put the ball up there even if they don't they stay on the ground they'll call another quick timeout because I believe they have uh, one left do they not they have uh, two right now remaining timeouts this is a third down and 16 
The Rebels need across the 35 yard line. Scott gets popped as he throws the football. It's not close to anybody. Again, Steve Heaver, who is having a tremendous football game, filling in for the injured Everett Lampkins is the guy that put the pressure on Scott. Roll Scott out to the far side. A waggle action to get away from the rush. But look at 48. He's just zeroing in. Bang, right there. I'll tell you what, a great job by Steve Heber. He's getting a chance to play, remember, because Everett Lampkins has been out the last few games with a hyperextended knee, and this guy is showing us what he can do. Solorio under pressure, but he gets a good punt away. High kick, near sideline, taken by Kolar. He's down at his own 49-yard line. The clock will stop with eight seconds to go in the opening half. So if Terry Shade chooses... He can try to add to his 15-point first half lead. There's Hesh Kolar, the emotional leader of their defense, and what a great defense it is. They have barely played well tonight with the exception of the one big play that UNLV popped on them, the pass by Cooper to McCardle, 58-yard touchdown pass that came with one minute to play in the first quarter. Let's see if they stretch it right here. They're going to just keep it on the ground. Everybody's tight but he's going to pass it Martini going to lay it up big ball's going to be short in the playing field out of the end zone it's tipped and the clock expires on the incomplete pass so San Jose State will jog in their locker room with a big lead playing on the road in their second big West Conference game of the year they are leading the Rebels 21 to 6 look at the play by Track, jumps, and he makes the catch. Nice play for Sammy Sosa. Way Get out. out! Bradley on the track, looks up, put it on the board. That's in the left as Eisenreich. Getting ready, Scotty's tagging. He's going to make it for an out. It's a bad throw. He got Scotty first. The Sox win it. The Sox win it, four to three, in the bottom of the ninth inning. They're off and trotting, and you won't want to miss any of the coverage when we bring you Chicago Harness Racing. Every day, Chicago Harness Racing examines the horses and riders making news at the track. From the even money favorites to the high paying long shots, Chicago Harness Racing covers them all. No other show examines the previous night's results quite like this. So be sure not to miss post time each weeknight and Saturday afternoon as we bring you Chicago Harness Racing. The bright lights of the big city in the desert, or as the cynics would call it, the green felt jungle. But you got to love Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> well, they got me on the nickel slots, but I made up for it at the buffet lunch. Let me tell you, I'm in and in for about 20 bucks on, on that food. The only clock in this town is on the scoreboard here in uh, the Silver Bowl. We're about 20 miles away from the strip. Jim Strong and his... Las Vegas coaches, they want to go down there tonight and uh, forget all about this ball game. So far, the first half, his team has been completely devastated. They knew coming in it would be difficult. Uh, he said at a talent level, San Jose State can compete with anybody in the country. But I think he's fully realizing how much work he has to do here. The guy that spent the last three years winning or contending every year for the national championship with Lou Holtz. And now he is halfway on to his first loss in the Big West. This is Vince McGowan's number five to return this football. And he has some room out across the 30-yard line. He's out to the Las Vegas 32, where they'll put it in play first and 10 for the first series of the second half. That is Craig Glatzoffer, the reserve safety number 38, making the tackle on special teams. Greg, what uh, the Rebels want to do right now, they want to play this as two different ball games. Now, really, realistically, there's not a good chance for them to win this one, so they're going to come out in the second half, try to play good football, good ball possession, ball control football, and see how well they can do. First and ten, Derek Stott is the second half quarterback, and the ball goes to Marvin Eastman. In the first half, Eastman carried the ball four yards for only nine yards. He is tackled by Mike Powers, a senior out of Cupertino. Last year, reserve right tackle, now a starter. He's also a backup catcher on the Spartan baseball team. At 87, he was. He was a 287 hitter behind the plate. 
Nevada Las Vegas also has an outstanding baseball program here. Matt Williams of the Giants, a graduate of the Rebel baseball program. Second and eight. And it is a run by Hunky Cooper. So Stott took the first snap, and then quickly Hunky Cooper, the better runner of the two, comes in for the second snap. Steve Heber makes the tackle. Heber, the inside linebacker, replacing Lampkins. Watch him read. Steps up, steps up, comes into the hole, takes on the block of the fullback, fights him off, and then brings down Hunky Cooper. Excellent position on the part of Steve Heber, keeping a low body, keeping his butt low, taking on the block of Marvin Eastman, fighting him off, and then making the tackle. The biology major laying his body on Cooper. They run the option. Cooper takes the pound before he made the hit, and he is under tackle quickly by Mike Schlaba. The senior outside linebacker, Cooper, should have pitched that football. He ate it, and he wound up getting pounded on the third down and five. So well, he, took, to punt. he took one step inside, Greg, and when you do that, then you eliminate that pitch because a super job by San Jose State of containing outside the perimeter, not allowing him to pitch that ball out. Solorio had five punts in the first half for an average of 37.6. It is a short kick taken by the up man, Cal Gagno. And the Spartans once again are going to have tremendous field position. Doug Calgagno is the backup rover back. Martini will take it over first and 10 from his 42 yard line. He threw 50% in the first half for almost 100 yards. A TD and an INT. Hands it off to Candley, who was tripped up after a gain of roughly three yards. Candley, 181 yards rushing in the first half. We showed you the offensive player of the week at the Big West Conference at halftime, Keenan McCardle. This man, uh, I think, is on his way, Jack. A safe bet to say he'll win it this week. Yeah, there's no question in my mind, unless somebody has a spectacular tonight, maybe somebody from Fresno State, but this guy should wind up with uh, well over 200 yards this evening. Play action pass. Wide receiver screen. They go to Walter Bricks Jr. Carlton Johnson can really pop. If it is joining us here in the second half, this man has been the best of the hitters in the defensive backfield for the Rebels. We talked about what a great competitor. Look at him reading. Now watch him fight off the block right there, Blackman. He does a super job fighting it off and then making the tackle. Heck of a play. Again, honorable, big, honorable mention, all Big West as a freshman, a solid competitor, great competitor, loves to hit, very intense. And he's only a sophomore. Big West will be getting popped from him for a couple of more years. Martini going to Candley misses on the third down and six. So on their first series of the second half, the Spartans are three and out. Good coverage on that last play by Reese Thomas, the freshman linebacker, covering Canley as Canley ran the flat coming out of the backfield. Something that Reese Thomas did not do in the first half, but makes a fine play that last one. Eric Negre into punt for the Spartans. Only punted the ball one time in the first half for 38 yards. Funky Cooper is waiting for this punt. And there's an end over end kick. It will bound to the 20. Take a roll. This may be trouble. Cooper will take it to this five yard line. Look at the move he makes to get across the 20 yard line. He had no room to work right up against the sideline, Jack. He made a tremendous play. Let's watch this one again. I'll tell you what, he does a great job because he's going to take this ball almost inside the five yard line. Now, watch where he gets it right there, about the five and a half, six yard line. Nothing but a wall of white shirts. Look at the super job he does is to get by the first two or three guys, gets it back out to about the 23 yard line. What a great job he does. That's where the Rebels and Cooper now at quarterback will have it when we come back. 11.47 to play, third quarter. in this town you gotta have fast feet and a big heart because this is a gutsy town and nobody as a sports writer you can't just watch the game you gotta completely absorb it every play every get it straight from the heart of the city the chicago sun times chicago's number one selling newspaper greg papa and jack snow back with you in las vegas 11.47 to play third quarter, and uh, Derek Stott has now gone to the sidelines. He began the second half for one play, and now it's Hunky Cooper. A junior out of Palestine, Texas, who will run this club. 
They give it to the fullback dive on the option for a yard, maybe. Marvin Eastman, number 29, picked up the short gain, and he is slow to get up. Eastman's a, a tough kid coming off a reconstructed knee surgery in 1989, the fullback for UNLV. Outstanding job, tough, hard nose runner inside, but well played by the defensive down line for San Jose State. Mike Powers, Bob Leish, and Simon Bailiffi. Second down and 10, they gave Eastman no gain on the previous carry. He was moving so quick, he ran into his quarterback. Marvin Eastman actually moved slightly before Hunky Cooper did, and he ran right up his back. Nice tackle by the fullback. Yeah, and he's talking to him also. Is going, are they going back to the huddle? And uh, you watch the fullback Eastman check with his quarterback. Hunky coming down the line of scrimmage, and Eastman runs right into him. There's a definite mix up there. Maybe it's supposed to be a fake to the fullback inside, and that's what Eastman wanted to know. Double checking with Hunky. But if there was gonna, they were going to do that, there was nobody behind Eastman to pitch the ball to. It wouldn't have been much of an option, yeah. Jack. It would have been death for her at Cooper. Well, he may have just been, maybe it had been a fullback dive. He wanted to go ahead and give him the ball, put it in his stomach, and leave it there. This guy's quick feet. It is caught out there by number five, Vince McGowans, the senior from Cincinnati. Last year, he was Las Vegas' rookie of the year under tackle by Charles Thomas. Senior cornerback from Los Angeles. So it is three and out again. And actually, they lose a yard or two on this series. Back into punt is Celorio, senior. He's been busy. High kick, good kick. Hesh Kolar from his 43 yard line. Runs into the Rebels at about the 45. Immediately pounded down there. Tackle made by Keith Clough, a reserve linebacker. Spartans have the football. Jim Strong's defense goes to work down 15 points. Hi, uh, Ron Shear. Each week we're at a different place. Each week is a new adventure on the great American outdoors. The most fun field and authentic hunting and fishing. Thurston. He's no crash dummy, not a scratch on him. Thurston's my hero. Why is that, my little battered buddy? Because he gets to wear the safety belt. No wonder he's still got his original paint job. You can't hate a dummy for being smart. Meh, yeah, I guess so. Here he comes. Hey, keep up the good work, guys. Buckle it up, Thurston. I always do. <laughs> you could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. There is the sixth head coach in uh, Las Vegas' football history. He was named uh, December 23, Jim Strong. And he has uh, got to see some dramatic change from his play here. His record this year will fall to one and three. His team down 21 to six. 9.58 to play. 
third quarter. Sheldon Canley with a two-yard gain there, setting up a second down and eight for the Spartans from their 49-yard line. Barbosa in motion. They fake the pinch. Martini with time. Now he's flushed and he's down. He is under tackle by David Clark. A senior linebacker. I'll tell you what, he had his tight end Rich Sarlat all alone, all alone on about the 35-yard line. If he could see him, a little quick toss to his left side. If he could find Sarlat, I'll tell you what, he's got a touchdown right here. Bumps into his own guy, then he tries to scramble to the outside before he's finally brought down. A nice job by David Clark of tackling him after he fought off a block. Well, that sack will set up a third down and 12. There's David Clark. Last week did not start their ball game. They're a big win over Oregon State on the road. He was out with a calf problem. Third and 12, he misses Walter Brooks, Jr. So again, second consecutive second half series, the Spartans run three plays and are forced to punt. And all of a sudden, they're not giving the ball to Sheldon Canley as much. And when they do give it to him, Nevada Las Vegas is defending him much better. Well, we can see what they did in the first couple of series to start the ball game. They wanted to try and work on that passing game. And they're trying to do that here in the second half, but unsuccessfully. Look at those three up men, San Jose State, or back men, I should say, defending the punt. Uh, Nate Gray, it goes into the end zone and jumping, trying to bat it out. But it does go into the end zone, and Nevada Las Vegas will take it at the 20-yard line. Jumping into the end zone there was Paul Hamilton, the rover back, who was very active on their special teams. But you saw the Spartans with three men deep protecting Negre. They feel the only way that Nevada Las Vegas can get themselves back into this game would be a catastrophe on special teams, like a block punt or something. Exactly right. And maybe they want to work on something a little bit different. So they want to try and go from a three up back stance in punt formation to see how that works. Just take a look at it. Well, the revolving door quarterback continues. Now it is Derek Stott. Back into the ball game. He throws out there. It is caught by Keenan McCardle. Lowers his shoulder and drops his head and picks up a first down. Keenan McCardle again, the big play guy. A quick little hitch route. He's going to come off the line of scrimmage, go about four yards downfield. Watch him. He's going to drive off, stop right there at five, five and a half yards. Come back, watch the ball into his shoulder, makes the catch. Now he just goes one on one with the defensive back and tries to muscle him for all he can get. And I think that may have been Paul Franklin playing the left corner for the San Jose State Spartans. That is McCardle's second catch of the football game. His first one went for 58 yards and the only Las Vegas points. Last year, he had a big game against the Spartans. 131 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Here's the pressure, and he spun down, and he is dropped. It was the rover back, Anthony Washington, supplying the initial pressure. Rover back, sometimes he can utilize him as an outside linebacker. Good size for a strong safety, 5'10", 207 pounds. Sophomore out of Pasadena, California. The reason he got the starting assignment over Doug Calgagno is because they say he's a better cover guy, but we're seeing his pressure there and his ability to get after the quarterback. And if you want to play defensively for San Jose State, you better get after the quarterback because they'll bring anybody. That's right. They like to bring those linebackers. It definitely will bring Anthony Washington, the rover, and on occasion will bring one of the outside uh, defensive backs. And there's a little, a little jump. Bob Fleiss just kind of jumps offside just a, a tad too early. Also, Chris Clark, number 22, the linebacker, was right up on the line of scrimmage showing blitz. Jack Gatto, our referee, says the Bleicher jumped off sides. I don't know how many penalties they have tonight, but that's got to be about, what, seven, eight penalties so far in the ballgame against San Jose State? Offside, defense, repeat second down. You know, the first half, they committed six penalties for 65 yards. I believe that's their first of the second half, so it would make it seven for 70. So it goes from second and 18 to second and 13 from the Las Vegas 28-yard line. Stop. Look at the pressure immediately. And now he has some time. He's being chased down. He eludes people. Fumbles the football. 
gets back on it and saves his life by going out of bounds. That was the longest play resulting in nothing you'll ever see. Looks like a modern-day friend Tarkington back there, Jay. I'll tell you what, thank goodness for artificial surface. That ball took two bounces and then came right back up to him. He feels the pressure looking for somewhere to go, but a super job. He just keeps moving around. There's Anthony Washington. The Rover's got a hand on his jersey. Just can't corral him. Super job effort by Derek Stott and watch the ball. Bump, 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 and whoop, right up into his. And boy, he says, thank goodness for that. Boy, I'm getting this ball. I'm going to go out of bounds. He's going to need a moment here. He's going to take a lot of the clock down to catch his breath. It is a third down and very long. They're at the 23. They need the 41, so it is a third down and 18. They actually marked him back six yards. And where he went out of bounds. He may have been down before then. He's going down again. <laughs> and the ball is loose. A big hit there by Mark Forrest, number 53. The backup outside linebacker and the Spartans say they have it. Yes, they do. Anthony Washington saying they have it, but let's see if one of those guys in stripes agrees. Nope, it's fourth down, they say. Watch what happens here. 77, Greg Mattis, the left guard, or the right guard. See him right there, 77? It almost looks like Stott's going to hand the ball to him for a moment, but he does drop it. That ball does bounce around. I'm not sure who made the recovery for the Rebels. That is the fifth quarterback sack on Derek Stott. They have not gotten to the other quarterback, Hunky Cooper, I don't believe. They had six last week. The Spartans with 18 sacks coming into this game. Ball is going to roll dead inside the Spartan 40. Look at this ball roll. That's the carpet. The artificial turf will really tack out a long punt there for Luis Celorio. That's his 45-yard punt. 6-18 to play. Third quarter. No score in this quarter. For the next three weeks, the Fighting Irish have one permanent address, and it's Sports Channel America. September 29th, Blue Holtz and Notre Dame compete head-to-head -head with an upset-minded Boilermaker squad. On October 6th, the Stanford Cardinal invades South Bend. And on the 13th, it's an aerial assault, Air Force style. Three weeks of Notre Dame football, and there's only one place where you can see it, live and exclusive. San Jose State has succeeded in uh, taking eight and a half minutes off the clock, Jack, but their, their offense has not worked in the second half, and mainly Sheldon Candley, their, their running back, who ran the ball for 181 yards in the first half. He has two carries and five yards in the second half. Here's his third carry. He fumbles the football at the 40-yard line. It's great. They're still jumping on it. Let's wait and see. Las Vegas may have just picked up a big break to get them back into the football game. Rebels and say they have it. That's wait. Yep, Epperson, does he have it? Yeah, none of the guys in stripes. Yes, it is Las Vegas football. <laughs> Couple Number 97 of good, may have gotten the ball. Couple of good blocks. Bryce Burnett or Rich Sarloff, the tight end, makes a good kick out block. Now watch what happens with the football right here. Canley trying to cut back. Hits, what tell you, he hits the ground and that ball pops right up in the air. Now it's a scramble. Well, it's impossible to tell who recovered. I yeah. believe Dave Pappas, number 97, is the guy who jarred it loose. A mistake by Terry Shea's club as the Las Vegas Rebels have recovered the 10th fumble of this season. They pride themselves in stripping the football. Here's a pitch. It goes to Black, and Derek Black dives across the 35-yard line. A gain of about five yards out of bounds. He stops the clock with six minutes to play, and he may be injured. Yeah, he's down. He's hurt. They're calling for some medical people, I believe, although he's right up against his sideline. Two of them down. There's one from San Jose State also. Oh, there is a Spartan down also. That's why they're calling for the across the field Spartan medical people to come in. Can't tell who that is down. Try and get a better look. It is certainly Derek Black. A junior. Let's watch it again and see. Black, 235 pounds. It could be Hesh Kolar, yeah. number 25. Eh? A tremendous collision right there between Hesh Kolar and Derek Black. Kolar, good size, but not huge. He's 195 pounds. He's taken on Derek Black at 235 and 
I'll tell you what, they both took a shot. Now Black is getting up, but Kolar is still lying on his back, and now he is elevating slowly. Good sight to see. Kolar is a big-time hitter. Hesh. He holds both hands up, Greg, and that means I'm okay. Let me walk yeah. off. I'm all right. He He's just had man. the wind knocked out of him. Uh huh. Yeah, now he is being applauded by his defensive teammates. Hesh Kolar, the junior out of San Jose. Hesh in Swahili means respected young warrior. That's why he was named Hesh. And, uh, he certainly is said. that. Yes, enough said. With all of the people they have injured in their defense, why Neil Mayo is out due to uh, the they're problem checking. he had with the authorities last week. What they're checking right now is to see if he had any problem with his spine at his neck. Here's Hunky Cooper going too far this for McCardle. On the second and six, he overthrows McCardle. Smart play, though, on the part of UNLV to come right back and they work against Craig Glatzoffer, who is in there and replaces Hedge Kolar that inside spot. So go right, right to work at him, on him, I should say. Look at this third down efficiency of the San Jose State defense. Last week, Pacific was 0 for 12 in third down conversions. So far, Las Vegas, one for eight. So, so far on Sports Channel, they're one for 20. Not stopping bad. the opponents overall this year. Just over 20 percent. That is unbelievable. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's a great, great uh, percentage for your defensive unit. Hesh Kolar is back in. Third and six. They run the option with Hunky Cooper. He may have picked it up. He's very close. Point of rarity if they would convert it. And they have converted it. First down, Las Vegas. Hunky Cooper, again, we talked about what a great athlete he is. A little inside fake to his fullback, Marvin Eastman, that takes it and outside and around. You see him get by Charles Thomas. That's one thing that Derek Stott cannot do. Stott did not have the speed or the quickness, does, as does Hunky Cooper. You see the backup tailback, Raymond Walters, coming in to get him to play. They've had a, a lot of problem with the tailback position physically this year. Teddy James. Andrea Luster, their first and second stringers, out with injury. They handed the fullback Marvin Eastman for a very short game on the first uh, game on the first and ten. There. Clock is rolling. 5:23 to play, third quarter. 21 to six, San Jose State. The Rebels started with the ball on the 40-yard line of San Jose State, so they want to try and come away with something here. Great field position. Don't come away empty, even if it's a field goal, which they may not try to do in the event that it should have presented itself, but try to come away with something. Second and nine. Cooper has the football. Has He's obviously feeling fine as he came up to make the tackle. Pushes him out of bounds, setting up a third down. What is happening down in Los Angeles? Well, the Dodgers have busted that game open a bit. They now have a five-run lead. Last time we checked, it was no score in the fifth. Now it is five-nothing Dodgers over the Giants. The Reds won the first game. They are trailing the second game. So if the Reds split and the Dodgers win, the Dodgers would pick up a half game and pull within three. But right now they are four back. Cooper, say hello to Steve Eber. Yes, although he is well aware who number 48 is. Absolutely, what a great job of filling by Heber. Again, Heber filling in for Lankins, and this kid, Heber, he definitely wants to play. Little option, fake it into your fullback. Now watch 48 come filling in the hole right there. Mm. Boy, oh boy, does he do a great job. Good low center of gravity, wraps him up and drives him back. There he is right there, 48, 6'1", 219 pound senior. Here's a field goal attempt. It's going to be a long one, 42-yard attempt. They've had problems with the PATs, but Ambrin's been a pretty good field goal kicker. He's made six of 10 this year. That one looks good. No, it is not good. He missed the field goal. It was wide to the left. Ted Amrin, the senior, misses the field goal from 42 yards away, and the Rebels don't score. Still down 15 points. Hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Moore, the head football coach at the University of Michigan. And I'm Jim Branstad. Be sure to join us each Sunday this fall for Michigan Replay. More of the names may have changed on the show, but Wolverine football hasn't. Absolutely not. We expect to be every bit as good as we have been in the past, and we'll make sure that you get the inside story about every game. Be sure to join us every week for Michigan Replay as we usher in a new era in Wolverine football.
Coming September 28th through the 30th, it's the historic last ever baseball weekend from the original Comiskey Park. And Sports Channel will be there for the hits, runs, and spectacular plays. Catch the excitement and drama as Sports Channel provides live pregame telecasts Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from both outside and inside Comiskey Park. Then complete game coverage Friday night and Sunday afternoon. It's the last weekend at Comiskey, and you won't want to miss this historic event. Watch the drama unfold the weekend of September 30th on Sports Channel. Greg Papa with Jack Snow with you in Las Vegas. They have not had much to cheer about tonight. Only one touchdown scored by the Rebels that came way back with a minute to play in the first quarter. When Hunky Cooper threw one 58 yards to the wide open Keenan McCardle. Since that time, the Spartans have taken the football game over. A couple of uh, Sheldon Candley touchdown runs and a touchdown pass from that man, Ralph Martini, to Bobby Blackman. They, the three touchdowns for the Spartans all coming in the second quarter. So far in the third, we have no points. 4.15 to play. It'll be a first and 10 for the Spartans from their 25-yard line. San Jose State has no first downs in the second half. Sheldon Candley only has 11 yards in the second half after 181 of the first half. It is a close play, no catch. No catch, Bobby Blackman took that one off the carpet. A nice job, though, by Blackman of coming back to try and, and make a play for his quarterback, Martini. Watch Blackman come back. Let's see if the elbows and forearms are down on the turf or does that ball actually hit it? He goes down, he tries to scoop it. Kind of tough to tell, but I think at that angle it did skip off the turf. It's not turf, it's artificial surface. Carpet, rug. That's turf. It's artificial turf. Second and ten. Martini, his pump peg lost the defender that he threw it into somebody's kneecaps. <laughs> Where did he throw it? At number 99, Chuck Reed. The hardest Chuck's been hit all night, I think. <laughs> Chuck Reed's a JC transfer out of Tyler, Texas. Oh, Earl Campbell. Way back when, when uh, back in the 60s, late 60s, Tyler, Texas would always send a team out to the Junior Rose Bowl, and he had the one of the finest marching bands and drill teams. The Tyler Majorettes, outstanding group of performers. Even better than the marchers from Ohio, huh? Sheldon Candley was found the running room tight. On the third and ten, he gets little, maybe four or five, but not enough for a first down. So San Jose State continues to pick up zero first downs in the second half. Seems like the second half, Greg, they're playing to the level of their competition. The first half did not do that. Plays very solid football. So we'll see their punter. Negre only punted the ball one time in the first half, but this is his third or fourth punt in the second half. Funky Cooper. Nice cut. Still on his feet. And he almost makes the 45-yard line. What a tremendous return there by Funky Cooper. This man can do everything with a football in his hands. He can catch it, he can run it, he can pass it. Tackle made by Troy Jensen, number six, a reserve safety for the Spartans. He is not going to play this series, at least not initially. It is going to be Derek Snuff. But in my opinion, he's the kind of quarterback you need out there against this attacking defense. Need somebody with more athleticism. Snott is having a hard time getting any time to pass the ball. Play action, a quick pass. He can do this. Did McCardle catch that football? Yes. Great pair of hands by McCardle on that one. Going to the outside, leaning back to the inside, just plucking that ball right out of the air. Be a good shot right here. Watch him come back up from the right side. Passes low and inside. See him go down for it. Heck of a job. Nice catch by Keenan McCardle. Last year he led the club with 54 receptions. Came into the ball game with a team high 17. He's caught three tonight. That one good for eight yards. Second and two. And they're going deep downfield and too far. Way overthrowing McCardle. He was covered well. And Stotch just threw it away. 
Yeah, I think so. Just to lay that ball. But well, you got a guy with the talent of McCarr can go high in the air. You sometimes may want to draw that ball back. By that I mean just throw it a little bit short. Let him go up and fight for the uh, for the ball. Last year, start against San Jose State was 16 for 30, 286 yards and three touchdowns. It was a 38-28 win for the Spartans. They have beaten this team the last four consecutive years. The pitch to Eastman, he's in big trouble. Mike Schlava on the third and two drops him for a loss. Schlava played that very, very well. Derek Stott did not. Stott should have pulled that ball back inside and just turned it up the field because that guy right there, Mike Schlava, had outside position, was in proper, and he was in the proper spot to make the play to the fine job. The strength of our team, Terry Shea says, is the defense. No kidding. This team is a great <laughs> defensive team. They're a good offensive team, but defensively they have dominated again. Celorio made the punt. Luis has a fair catch called, and that takes some doing to get Polar to raise that hand. And he already got popped earlier in the quarter. He wants to rest up. 154 to play. San Jose State will take it first and 10. Join us tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, for a replay of today's exciting ball game from Michigan State. East Lansing, they saw Notre Dame and the Spartans go right down to the wire. And we're going to have a couple of uh, live broadcasts coming up, three in a row involving Notre Dame next week, Purdue, then Stanford, and then Air Force. October 6th, the Cardinal and Notre Dame. Maceo Barbosa, the ball carrier. Bruce! Maceo Barbosa. Uh-huh. See how easy it is? You're uh -huh. waiting all night, huh? Uh-huh. I've been waiting for that. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been avoiding his name, too, Jack. Uh, you've been calling him strictly <laughs> Barbosa. Forget the Maceo. He picked up seven yards. Second and three. They pitch it to Canley. Fumbles the football! Look at that. The Spartans dive back out, and I believe it was Barbosa that got it back. Aaron Christian is the guy that stripped it. Oh, man. That ball was long free at the 10-yard line. I'll tell you what, it's an excellent job by Aaron Christian to strip it, but a super job by Barbosa to come back inside and see the ball get over there and fall on it. Otherwise, you've got UNLV with the ball at about the 11, 12-yard line. And you can just hear Terry Shea saying to his offensive people, hold on to the football because Christian and all of those guys in red are going to be trying to strip us. 45 seconds to play to score this third quarter. Third and eight. Blackman makes the catch. He is going to be short of the first down, though, out of the 20-yard line. He needs to get out across to about the 22. Look at what he threaded that ball right in between Stacy Monroe and Ramon Hilton, the two inside linebackers for the Rebels. Great job of concentration on the part of the receiver. It's fourth and one. Martini and the Spartans have not yet picked up a second half first down. That's the fourth punt that they're going to have here in this half. They only had one of the entire first half. Negre in the punt. Four seconds to play. Just in time. And they're all over them. They blocked the punt. UNLV will begin the fourth quarter with the ball on the Spartan six-yard line. Right off the gut, the game storming up the gut. I saw Tony Dilly was in there. He was one of a bunch of guys, and there's a three-man up back protection, but they come right through. Look at him all the way through. Man keeps me outside. I didn't quite get his number, but what a super job. UNLV gets the big play, and they need it. Down 21 to 6. Third quarter is done. Pop alongside Jack Snow back with you at the Silver Bowl here in Las Vegas where UNLV just picked up the big brink they're looking for in the second half. They blocked the punt. We're not sure who did it, but whoever it was got in there and made a big play to give his club a first down and goal from the six-yard line. So what uh, Jim Strong's offense could not do, his special teams does. But see, you notice it a couple of uh, punts ago when they went with the three upbacks, and I made the comment that they may be trying to experiment with something a little bit different right here to give their punter more protection, but on that last play, it definitely did not work. Tremendous pressure right up the gut. 
Then again from the outside, the people up the gut took on those three up blockers, and the actual field, the blocker came from the outside on the right side. They go to a full house back uh, backfield, running the option. They give it to the man up in the middle, number 29, Marvin Eastman. Steve Hebert, who was having a monstrous football game. We're talking about Candley being the offensive player of the week in the Big West Conference. Heber is going to be a defensive candidate. He is filling in for the men we've talked about a lot. Everett Lampkins, who was out until uh, probably the, they're hoping to get him back for the Fresno State game. We're going to have that ball game for you right here on Sports Channel, the big game of the year, last game of the season. Second down and goal from the seven. Hunky Cooper loops it up. It is dropped out there. Looking for the backup tight end, Brad Orick. Number 48 and Cooper saying, man, I had him open. I missed him. He did. The ball may have been just a tad too far, but great effort on the part of Brad Orick to try and get that right hand out there to corral the football and bring it back in. But well, here is a huge play. Third down and goal from the seven-yard line. They cannot afford to give away that block punt. They have to go into the end zone. Play action, option. They're not going in here, not even close. How in the world do they feel they can run the football in on that third and goal from the seven if you me? Well, they want to try and get Hunky Cooper outside, and what they're doing, they're containing outside, forcing Cooper back inside, but the play, the slide of the linebackers, not allowing the hole to open long enough. They're doing a great job, and again, that goes credit goes to Steve Heber's in there, Burnham's in there, Mike Slaba doing a fine, fine job. Well, Jim Strong is well aware how big this fourth down play coming up is, so he will take one of his timeouts here. Fourth and goal from the five, and we come back, his team down 15 points. Well, I love you every summer, and I left you every fall and springtime. It's not just a baseball game, it's an historic event. The last baseball game ever in old Comiskey Park. Get set as Sports Channel brings you the finale at the House on 35th Street, Sunday, September 30th, as the thrilling conclusion to our weekend-long Comiskey Fest. Live coverage begins at 11, with two and a half hours of interviews and special reports on the ballpark leading up to the final game. And you won't want to miss the special Sports Channel tent in Armour Park, just north of Comiskey on the final day. Stop by Sunday morning after 11, watch our live programming, and enjoy some free refreshments. It's the last day at Comiskey with Sports Channel, brought to you in part by Coca-Cola and True Value. Well, you're back in time for the most crucial play of the football game so far. Fourth and goal facing Las Vegas. Monkey Cooper wants to make certain of the play. What they're doing here, Jack, they've taken their top receiver. At least they did, but now he's back in at number 84. Keenan McCardle is back in. They were going with a full house backfield and two tight ends. Now they go two tight ends, two backs in the eye, and McCardle is flanked left. Fourth and goal from the five. They're looking for McCardle. Cooper's flushed. He goes in the end zone. It is caught, I believe. It's a touchdown. McCardle caught it. Was it McCardle or, or was it Brad Orick? Yeah, I think it was Brad Orick. Number 48, not 84. Brad Orick, the backup tight end. We were talking about that during the timeout. Drag that tight end across, trying to let him find the open seam. Now, the thing that he does here is he gets outside. Here comes the pressure. One miss right there. Now, watch him get outside of Burnham right here. Burnham's got a hand on him. Now he's directing traffic. Comes back, throws a very difficult pass back across his body. Looks like it's going to be intercepted, but I'll tell you, a heck no, of a that, fight going on. Is that, that is 84? McCardle. Yes, that it is. is. Keenan McCardle made the, the touchdown catch. That's his second of the night. And what Hunky Cooper does, his athletic ability just gives him more time. He's able to stay up longer. He can elude the rush for maybe a second or two more and give somebody like McCardle the opportunity to get open downfield. It is now 21 to 12. And they are horrible at kicking PATs. They're not even going to try that. And in this situation, they don't want a PAT. One point, they want a two-pointer. They're down right now 21 to 12. So a two-pointer will bring them within a touchdown. The defense has elected to accept the penalty on the try 
five-yard penalty. The try will now be completed from the... Spit it out, babe. He turned off his butt. Spit it out. He is, uh, but that penalty was, I think some things came out of the stands in the end zone right there, and that's why the officials may have called the yes. uh, five-yard penalty. They threw seat cushions out of the field from the crowd here. We have an ordinary bunch in Las Vegas tonight. <laughs> that, that official has a future in television when you're stumbling. Just turn off your microphone. That's right. That'd be so easy to do, wouldn't it? <laughs> How many times would we wish we could do that? <laughs> well, they're going to kick in here, Jim, because the five yards is significant. Takes them back to the eight-yard line. Well, we have a story. They made one. Todd Ambrin, who was one for five personally, makes one, but they're still down eight points. 21 to 13, San Jose State now with 13.43 to play. There are over $375,000 in cash prizes waiting for you in the Sun-Time Social Security sweepstakes. Look for your winning number every day in Chicago's number one selling newspaper, the Chicago Sun-Times. Backup quarterback, Hunky Cooper, has tossed two touchdown passes. Here is the last one, and it is done mostly by Keenan McCardle to take this ball away in the end zone. But look at the job he does of getting outside again, getting by Burnham. Now he reads his receiver. He points to him, sets up, and fires it. Now watch the job that Keenan McCardle comes in and takes that ball away from Paul Franklin. What an outstanding job. Franklin, for a moment, thought he had the interception. Keenan McCardle says, no way, that ball belongs to me. And what they were employing there, they had a full house backfield, three backs and two tight ends. Then they changed it before the big fourth and five. They took one of the backs out, brought in McCardle. And what Jim Strong was simply saying is, that's it, man. We're going to our best player, McCardle. You're getting the ball, and McCardle just took it away in the end zone. What a great play. Absolutely. Four catches, 84 yards, and two touchdowns. And we have a football game now. It is 21 to 13. Here's the ball taken by Sheldon Canley. Across the 25-yard line, he's out to the 26. And with 13.38 to go, the Spartans have got to rekindle their running game here. Sheldon Cantley, after rushing in the first half for 181 yards, has not seen his team pick up a single second-half first down. Five possessions. I'll tell you what, they've fumbled once and punted four times in their five possessions of the second half. A six-yard drive as they block a punt. Sheldon Candley. Say hello to Ramon Hilton now. In Las Vegas, their defenders have got to continue to be fired up and make plays. See Carlton Johnson, number one, jumping that huddle late. He's in there slapping his fists into the palm of his hands. Saying, Come on, guys, let's get going. Let's stop him here and take it over. There he is. Definite leader back there. Tough kid, boy. I'll tell you, really tough. Let's update you from Fresno. No surprise here. 28 to 3. Fresno State on their way, it looks like, to their 22nd win of the last 23 ball games. And that'll be the 21st in a row loss for the Aggies. Longest in the nation. We'll be in Fresno next week. You watch Fullerton State try and break the Bulldogs' home winning streak. That's Bobby Blackman. And that is a first down. That is the first first down for Terry Shea's offense in the entire second half. But Terry Shea looking a little worried. He told his troops on the sideline, his offense, come on now, let's get the ball when we get it back, and let's control it. Let's do some, some good things here, keep the ball away from them, because they've got an emotional high going right now. It's going to be up to Sheldon Cantley. Boy, they're all over him. The Rebels are pounding with a cause here. They're laying some uh, shoulder pads into Cantley. Clock rolling, 12-41 to play. San Jose State and Martini trying to milk this one away. 21-13 they lead. And if they win this game, they will go to 2-0 in the Big West Conference. Fresno State looks like they're on their way to their first win over 1-0. Inside, Maceo Barbosa picks up a few. It'll bring up a third down at about two and a half. A little quick hitter into the fullback Barbosa, and what the quarterback Martini did is he opened 
and did a 360 all the way around. And what that does is that draws that one linebacker one step to his right side, which creates a little bit of a hole if Barbosa can pop through. Last week we saw him right here on Sports Channel. Jack just take the game over in the fourth quarter with the running game against the Tigers. Let's see if the Spartans can do it for two in a row against the Rebels. Pitch to Candley. First down. Ball is free. Was he down? He was down. You can tell by the reaction of the crowd, a collective moan here. That's the third the time he's, he's dropped the ball tonight, if I'm not mistaken. The third time that Canley has dropped the football. He hasn't lost it, but the third time. Burnett, the tight end, doing a good job of driving Clark to the outside. Heck of a job all the way. Good camera work right there. And you, you don't want that outside linebacker to be driven that far out. But a heck of a block on the part of Bryce Burnett. Wait a minute, they didn't give him the first down. Was it a fourth and one? Yes. It is a fourth and one, and Martini does have the first down. Yeah, I think when he lost that ball, one of his own guys must have fallen on it for him. That was a fourth down play. Is it the initial yardage by Candley was certainly sufficient, but then the fumble, as Jack mentioned, sets up a crucial play, but Martini sneaks it. Yeah, he was on a preseason all Italian American team. That can't be too difficult to make, though, Jack. Who's that, Martini? Yeah. Maybe the all Hugh Blind team, also, if I'm not mistaken. He is a recreation major, wants to be a coach when he's done playing. Well Sheldon played. Canley is driven down by David Clark. Well played by David Clark. He got ridden out the last player, two plays ago by Bryce Burnett, the tight end. This time he comes in and makes a big tackle. Nice play by David Clark. There's Carlton Johnson, one of the leaders of their defensive backfield, which leads their defense. Not a strong group. First week, they gave up 31 points to a Division I AA school in losing at home here, Southwest Missouri State. Second week, they were beaten in the Astrodome by the Cougars in a moral victory, though, 37-9. And last week, they won their first game at Oregon State on the road, 45-20. There's a second and ten. It is complete out here for Walter Brooks, Jr. David Efferson, number eight, the left cornerback. First year with the Rebels. Good tackle, too, by Efferson. Wrapped him up because he had no help coming. He was out there on an island all by himself. Martini whipped that ball out there to his wide receiver, Walter Brooks, Jr., and an excellent tackle by David Efferson. Another big play on this drive, Jack. Third down and two. They give it to their man, Candley, first down. San Jose State has turned up the offense a notch on this drive. We talked about that man right there, number 20, the outstanding first quarter that he had, how many yards he'd gained, how many carries he was carrying the ball every other down, it seemed. If he would be tired come this fourth quarter, he has dropped the ball a couple of times late in the third and beginning here in the fourth quarter, and he may be getting a little fatigued. By our numbers now, he has 204 yards. Not a bad night. But 181 of the game of the first half on 24 carries. Runs into his flyback, Barbosa. Now they're all going to wrap him up. Hilton and Clark. Or not Clark, that was uh, 97. Dave Pappas there to help it out. But the clock rolls. 9.30 to play. Well played by Ramon Hilton to the freshman inside backer for the Rebels. Stacked up the block of Barbosa and then made the tackle. You're wondering about a San Jose State school record. Johnny Johnson, 228 yards. He could, he could break that tonight. He really could. He gets a couple of uh, couple of medium-sized gains off here pretty quick. He could do it. Here's Candley. And right now, he's thinking about 10-yard increments. He wants to move the chains. Johnny Johnson, I'm telling you, watch that guy in the pros. He had a big week last week with the Phoenix Cardinals. And they're looking for a good running back. Oh, yeah, they like him a lot down there in Phoenix. He was probably the most pleasant surprise of training camp for the Phoenix Cardinals and did an outstanding job. Their number one choice was a Thompson out of Indiana. Reported Anthony very, very, Thompson, yes. Yeah, reported late. And, uh, they weren't really uh, really that uh, upset with, Th with Thompson because uh, Johnson was doing such a fine job. They had a big upset win last week at Philadelphia on a late field goal by... 
Del Greco. Here's the third and three. It is caught for a first down by Bobby Blackman. Boy, you have to be impressed with this Spartan marks. They have taken the game and said, we're ramming it right down your throat here. They're doing it. This is a great touch pass by Martini. Watch him. He lofts it up there, lets his receiver go up high, brings him back to the inside. Just an excellent job by Bobby Blackman as he's worked against, working against Carlton Johnson. Goes high up over Johnson. See the back of his helmet up there on top. A lot of gray or silver streaks on the bottom or the top of that helmet. The silver streak, that's a Detroit. That's the 10. They take it inside the 10. That was a 13-yard pickup on the pass to Blackman. UNLV wants that ball. They're Tony Gilly, yeah, he's getting up saying, hey, I took that ball away from him. That's our, our football. The referee's saying, nope. Also 49, Stacy Monroe, junior linebacker. They know this is winning time right here. Their defensive coordinator, Ronald Cooper, flashing in some signs alongside Jim Strong. They know the game right now is in the balance. Clock is rolling, 7.35 to play. And the Spartans have an eight-point lead and a second and five from the seventh of Las Vegas. Sheldon Cantley may go into the end zone if he does. What balance that man shows as he does the somersault in the end zone following his third score of the night. And the Spartans... Open up a 27 to 13 lead. See what County does a great job of maintaining his balance, going right up in off the right tackle and right guard and center. Looks like he's going to go down. He's hit twice. Tony Dilly gets a hand on, but he does a 360. Keeps going north and south, and that's what you teach your runners. Don't run side to side. Head north and south. He doesn't come down until he gets in the pay dirt. He may be on his way to an all-time Spartan record. He now has 223 yards rushing, and now three. Touchdowns. De La Fleur, did he get it? Or did he hook it? He made it. His fourth PAT, and the Spartans have taken the game back over and regained their 15 point lead. 7.26 to go. They're back up 28 to 13. Very similar to our Sports Channel game last week. Sheldon Canley takes the game over the fourth quarter with this, his third touchdown of the night. Look at the surge. Look at the, there's right there. The tackle should have been made. I think that was Ramon Hilton should have made that tackle. Again, another one bounces off, and that was Tony Dilly. But I'll tell you what, Sheldon Canley, one of the finest, an excellent runner, a great night tonight. So we'll see a kickoff again by... Raul De La Flor, interesting story. He's a walk-on from Peru. His younger brother needed uh, medical treatment on his heart, a regular heartbeat. He went to Stanford Medical Center. His whole family moved over from Peru, and now he's kicking for the Spartans. Here's Hunky Cooper diving his way on this carpet, out close to the 30-yard line. 75-yard scoring line for San Jose State. Very impressive. After not picking up a single first, was it seven? No, it was 89 yards. Pardon me. I was told 75, but it's 89. 89 yard drive, even more impressive. And when you consider the fact, Jack, that they didn't uh, pick up a single first down in the entire second half up until that drive to run off 12 plays to chew up nine and a half minutes of the clock, the third of the fourth quarter clock. That is really impressive. Yeah, it was outstanding, and that's what they had to have at this particular time in the ball game. Hunky Cooper's going upfield. And he overthrows Vince McLawens, the senior deep threat. <laughs> Coverage there was very strong by Charles Thomas. So Terry Shea looks like he's on his way to 2-0 in the Big West and 2-1-1 overall. And he very well could be 4-0 and in the top 25 if we're not for about four points his first week they tied a very powerful louisville team 10 to 10 they put a couple of field goals late second week they almost won at washington a pac 10 school jack lost only 20 to 17. not that they could have they should have beaten washington up there in seattle overthrowing mccardle is hunky cooper Danny mccardle scored both Las Vegas touchdowns tonight. Senior out of Houston, Texas. Tremendous talent. I'm not sure if he has the foot speed to play in the National Football League, but he certainly has the hands. He looks pretty good. He looks like he can move pretty good. Remember now, too, the secondary for San Jose State. They're going to play him a little bit soft this late in the ballgame. Those corners are going to be told, don't come up and play him too tight. Let him run. Keep everything in front of you. UNLV is two for 12 on third down conversions. Here comes Heber. 
Upfield, it is incomplete. Coverage there by Paul Franklin as he was covering John Mayhi. We've not seen him much, a freshman. Flanker number 15 was covered by Franklin playing for the injured Eddie Thomas. Franklin thought he should have had an interception also on that last play. The ball seemed to go right through his hands. He was upset with himself. Three and out for Jim Strong, now doing a bit of coaching. 7.06 to play in this game. His team is down 28-13, low snap. But it is taken by Celorio. Cal Gagno does a somersault backwards on the thrust of that ball. And the up man takes the ball at the 41-yard line. His own 41 with the Spartans will take it at a first and 10. Exactly seven minutes to play in this football game. Cal Gagno out of San Leandro, California, in the East Bay. Jimmy Strong trying to rally the defense. Come on, guys. Defensive coordinator Ronald Cooper right alongside. Again, we talked about the coaching staff for UNLV all in their first year, so they have to blend. It's going to take some time. Here's Sheldon Candley, and on this carry, he may, and I believe he has, eclipsed the San Jose State all-time rushing record previously held by Johnny Johnson, Jr. He ran for 228 yards in 1988 against Utah State. Unofficially, we have Sheldon Cantley now at 228 yards. He's tied him on 36 carries. Now this one will break it. There you go, Sheldon Cantley is into the record books. That's the Spartan first down. I don't know if he has any word of the field or not, Jack. What a night. What a night that kid's had. He's got to be tired. He started his football game at 193 pounds. He's probably down to 175 right about now. Leaning over that huddle. Yes, sir. There it is. 37 rushes, 235 yards, three touchdowns. A new single game record for San Jose State University. Martini has a man out there. I believe he got it. Oh, yes. What a marvelous catch there by 83 Walter Brooks, Jr. Brooks put a post move on. David Epperson stuck his left hand up like he was going to the post and then broke back. We'll see if we can see it. But he comes out of his post move. A nice lead pass on the part of Mont uh, Martini. Nice job laying out, getting the football and touching down before he goes out of bounds. You weren't uh, making a mistake, I think. You're What's that? You did almost call him Montana. <laughs> Montini. <laughs> Ralph Montini. He's playing well, but not quite that well. Here's Martini to the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, oh. Broken up. Hello. Is that a catch for Sarlon and the touchdown? I believe it was taken away from him. Oh, my. He had the ball to the end zone. He got popped. Tony Dilly, number 17, Rock Sarlot. This is one of the hassles if you're a tight end. Rich Sarlot, this is going to be normal speed now. So what you see is not slow motion. This is the exact hit. Boink. Hello. Whoa, what happened? I'll tell you what. You got to check your eyelids for holes after that one, baby, because that, shut, that knocks him shut. Sarlot came to San Jose as a quarterback. And he switched to tight end, and just the opposite for Martini. He was a tight end to Brigham Young. Here's Sheldon Candley, tacking on his huge night. He's also over 300 yards total offense. He has two San Jose State records. Earlier tonight, he eclipsed Tim Curse's all-time record as far as all-purpose yards. And tonight, on the ground exclusively, he has broken Johnny Johnson Jr.'s record for yards rushing. I'll be honest with you, when I first read and researched this guy and then I saw some film clips of him, I wasn't that impressed. And then last week, definitely was not that impressed with him. But tonight, he has made me a believer. The kid could do it. Well, you were not impressed through three quarters last night, but you liked him certainly in the fourth quarter when he went over 100 yards. He had 65 with 110 in the yeah. fourth quarter. Here he hurdles his way. Takes it down to the five-yard line. And certainly, you know, Candley is having a remarkable ball game, but his offensive line, which finally is getting whole, they're getting healthy up front, is doing a tremendous job. Hines and Emil, Bender, Anthony Gallegos is back in the lineup after missing a few weeks. Yosefa, number 71, 
Wiseffa did not play against UOP because of a hamstring, but he's back in there, right tackle tonight, doing a great job. And both the tight ends have played a fine football game tonight for San Jose State. First and goal from the five. Martini throws. Fly goes down. It is caught for a touchdown. Martini second throwing touchdown. David Blanks caught it, but a flag is down. Will it be or could it be offensive pass interference against the Spartans? This man will have the answer for us. Jack Otto. It's interference. It's offensive. It's a loss of down. You are right, Jack Snow. Offensive pass interference and loss of down. Oh, that's going to do basically give them more yardage to work with. Got a good job of flooding the zone on the, by the uh, Spartans of San Jose State. They had a short man at the goal line, and they had a man deep. David Blakes was the short man who wound up making the catch. Offensive pass interference. Loss of down. Second down. Well, that's a big turn of events. Yes, it is. Touchdown is wiped away. They go from uh, first and five before that play. Now it was second and 20. And it's the second and goal from the 20. They have Barbosa in the flyback slot, slot back. He goes in motion. They're going to run a reverse here for 82, Byron Jackson. He gets inside the 10 yard line with some brilliant running and a big time block there by number 64, the center, Brian Woods. Yeah, Brian Woods does a tremendous job against. Dave Pappas, watch the block coming up. 64 on 97. For a point. Oh, hello. Takes him right off his feet. What a job. Now, Brian Woods is a guy that hasn't played a whole lot. He was hurt in a skimboard accident. Had arthroscopic knee surgery back on August 3rd, but he's in there tonight, and what a great block he put on. Last year, he played every down. Not that guy, 82, Byron Jackson, but uh, Brian Woods, the center. And if he's back into the game, their offensive line is holding. Everybody will be healthy, and he is in. Still playing at center in the end zone. Martini goes. It looked too easy there. Bobby Blackman, his second touchdown of the night. Martini's second touchdown passing, and they're going to celebrate. Candley gets in there. Here, we'll watch it again. Great job again by Martini, getting better game after game. Searching out his receiver, lays the ball out nicely. He sees he's in behind the front man. Nobody inside of him or outside of him lays the ball in there nicely. 34 to 13. Martini and his offense going to get a reputation for being a fourth quarter club. Second straight week, they have just manhandled the Big West opponent in the last quarter. Hit the upright and no good. So De La Flores kicking troubles continue this year as he missed the PAT, but the Spartans have plenty. They lead by 21 with 4.55 to play. Sam Boyd's Silver Bowl begins to empty out in Las Vegas. Following this last touchdown, they're down 21 points. We'll get another shot of Bobby Blackman finding the open seam. Martini doing a fine job, looks to his right. Now he finds Black, but he's going to stay with him all the way. Lofts the pass over the short man and into the outstretched arms of number 80, Bobby Blackman, the second TD of the night. Bobby Blackman could be a developing star for San Jose State. That's his second touchdown tonight. Leads the club coming in in total receptions. 4.55 to play. The ball is blown off the tee. It's been a windy evening. Here in Las Vegas. Play a little downpour about three hours before kickoff. It rained here yesterday heavily for a short period of time, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then just stopped. But uh, it seemed like this wind stopped a little bit by the end of the second quarter, into the third quarter, but it's picking up again now. Look at that wind. Take that ball. Oh, that place. Looks like Wrigley with the wind blowing in. Fumble! Ball is free, and San Jose State has it back. What a strange play there. The return man caught the ball, that he dove into the air. Looked like number 28, Damon Keener. Yeah, Damon Keener, he had to come up and get in a hurry because once that ball goes 10 yards, that's a free ball, and San Jose State can recover it. So the wind blowing in works out, and there Jim Strong is telling him how to play the wind, almost like Candlestick Parker, Wrigley Field here tonight. 
Watch Keener right now. 20. He knows he's got to come up and get it. He grabs the ball, pulls it into his chest, but loses it before he hits the ground, and then it's a free ball. And he went a long way up for that football. Yes, Keener. he did. Sheldon Candley wants to tack on some more yards. There. A little angry on the sidelines. Jim Strong Thank took off know. his cap. And he is mad, I presume, at his own team as he's talking to his coaches, looking on the sidelines for somebody to get after. Stanley's coming out now, a well deserved rest. He's broken the record for the single game rushing. He needs to blow the wholesale substitutions in there now for the Spartans of San Jose State. There's a guy we saw late last week, Chip Vargas, number 40. He takes it wide. And also Mike Jordan has come into the game, new quarterback for San Jose State, as Terry Shea is doing the proper thing here, not looking to pour it on. He brings in some backup people. Mike Jordan, we also saw him last week, late in the fourth quarter at Pacific. He is a senior quarterback out of Pine Valley, California. He's a good passer with a compact delivery. He came into their game against Washington in the fourth quarter after Martini was knocked out with a hip pointer, played very well, led them to a touchdown. Here's Blair Zur, number 44, getting an opportunity to run the ball for the second time, not only tonight, but all year. He is normally a blocking back. Final score. From Los Angeles, the Dodgers keep the heat on the Reds. They beat the Giants 6-3. And the Reds, oh, the Reds won the first game. They have taken a lead in the second game in San Diego. Padres searching for a new GM now after firing Jack McKean. They traded in the trader. Mike Jordan going end zone. No, he's going for a photographer. <laughs> Throw that ball on the track that goes out of the field there, the, the runway down there. That wasn't a bad choice. I'll tell you what, I'm not too happy uh, about that call. If you're sitting over there on the sidelines with Jim Strong as you're going, hey, wait, what's, what's going on here? It's 34-13. It got 3.35 to go. Well, what's happening with the Oakland A's chances? Ooh, Chicago taking some balls out in the kingdom. 14 to five in the seventh. A's won today at the Coliseum, five to one over the Tigers. So the magic number goes to two, but it's not gonna go down. So the A's tomorrow could clinch a tie. The White Sox game against Seattle tomorrow is tomorrow night. You don't think that guy right there wants to touch down, do you, Vargas? Boy, he went through that hole like a rocket. Chip Vargas, tiny man. He is the last man to be added to their traveling squad looking to punch it across and give the Spartans a sixth touchdown. It is 34-13. 3-0-3 to play, and Vargas will not get it. That will bring up a fourth down, and... Goal from the one. What does Terry Shea do? He brings in a new play from Byron Jackson. The wide receiver. He's going for it. Maybe a little roll out of to keep the ball on the ground. I'm not sure. It looks like they may be going out of a sh shotgun, maybe. I don't know. I hope not, but they're not. Fourth and goal. The option, he takes it in. Mike Jordan, high stepping, then a little extra glare there for Carlton Johnson. The man has been popping some of his teammates, and Mike Jordan takes it in. The sixth touchdown of the night for the Spartans. They have opened up a 40 to 13 lead. Little play action in here to your fullback to hold the linebackers again. Nice execution on the part of the offensive line and quarterback Mike Jordan. When he turns it upfield, there's nobody there to lay a hand on him. Flips the ball to the official and jogs off the field. There he is, number seven, Mike Jordan. And now he will hold for Raul De La Fleur. 2.21 to play. He missed another extra point. Oh, man. Oh. He has missed two in a row. He has had a field goal block. So despite this impressive offensive performance and a very good one by the defense, Terry Shea still has some work to do with his special teams. A punt block tonight. This guy, Dita Floor, 
having a very tough time kicking. Yeah, you, what, what happens is down the road in a big ball game, and they got a couple of them, you know, you look at that Fresno State game, you do not want that lack of an extra point or lack of a special teams to kill you, and it very easily could happen. Well, their schedule actually, Jack, is going to really heat up the next couple of weeks. They right now, tonight is the third game in a stretch of five in a row on the road for the Spartans, and the next two, they leave the Big West Conference and play in the Bay Area against the Pac-10. They have Stanford next Saturday, and then they have Cal the following Saturday. Both games on the road. You talk about a tough schedule. They have the toughest schedule in the Big West Conference. They've already played Louisville and Washington. And now they have Stanford and Cal back to back weekends. Hear what the Stanford got a good ball club too. Glenn Milburn, the little scat back up there, does an outstanding job for the uh, tree. I could call him a tree. They gave UCLA a great game last week by a four final losing by a point. Here's McGowan's getting outside. Stanford gave Colorado a great game too back in Boulder a couple of weeks back. Yes, that was a late touchdown that was disputed. Here's that uh, kick return from the other end zone. Let's watch the wedge form. Returner takes it, heads up into the middle, does a fine job reading it. Now he's going to bust to the outside. Gets all he can get before he's finally bumped out of bounds by Raul De La Fleur, the uh, kicker, the guy who kicked it off. A nice run back, though, by Vince McGowans. <laughs> McGowans. Easy for me to say, Greg. Hey, don't tell Daniel. 2.14 to play. Eric Stott back in, little shuffle ball, and uh, Marvin Eastman, he gets really leveled. He dropped his head and created some damage himself, but uh, Chris Clark, the linebacker, number 22, pounds him down, and we have under two minutes to play in this game. It'll be the first ever Big West defeat for Jim Strong and the Rebels. They will fall to 0-1 of the conference, and... Uh, Overall, they are going to one in three. Wide receiver University has become running back University. Aaron Craver, one of the top players in the country. Derek Stott running for his life like he has all night long. And he throws it upfield. It is intercepted. Troy and Jensen. Yes, number six. He's going to take it back a long way here. Jensen is inside the 20 before he is finally shoved out of bounds. The safety man, Troy Jensen, makes a big play. Hey, what He ran about 90 yards on that because he took the ball on about the 30, 35 yard line, took off up the field, hit the 50, and ran almost 55 yards to the opposite side of the field. <laughs> but I tell you, his adrenaline is going a poor pass here on the part of the quarterback, Stott. He just lays this ball up. You know, in hopes that his receiver can catch it, you'll watch number six come in here, Jensen. Picks it off nicely to watch, and there it is. 40-45 now. He's going to pick up a couple blocks. Nice job there, Reedy. Now it's clear across the field. That's, you know, 55 yards almost across the field. Then turns it up, pick up about another 15. So that's about 55 and 15. And set. He went about 85, 90 yards on that reception that didn't score. It goes down to the books as a 49-yard return, though. Here's our man, Blair Zur. He may go, or pardon me, Vargas. Oh, he almost got into the end zone on the one-yard line. Chip Vargas took it down to the goal line. He could smell it. There's Jensen getting his accolades. And here's Vargas. A little delayed draw. Reads the block of his left tackle nicely. Turns it up infield. Gets by a couple of the Mike Slava on the outside line. Or not Slava, but one of the outside backers for UNLV. What a nice job, fine job of running by Vargas. Tough to tell Vargas this game is over. And now he's hurtling, and he is over himself. Another touchdown. That is the seventh touchdown of the night. Jim Strong, welcome to the Big West Conference. He'll be okay. He's going to take some time, but he'll be okay. He's down now 46 to 13. Although I think overall he can be certainly encouraged by a couple of factors. I think he has to like his backup quarterback, Punky Cooper. I think so. He always liked Keenan McCardle. And those defensive backs did play well. He'll be on more competitive footing next week when he takes on Pacific on the road in his second big one game. 
But for the first one, he is going to absorb a hammering. With one minute to go in this football game, it is now San Jose State 47 and the Rebels 13. So De La Fleur hit seven of nine PATs. What else happened around the Big West? Out of conference, Fullerton was beaten by the Akron Zips. That was their third consecutive road game. They fall to one and three overall. Non-conference game, obviously, 48-17 there. Long Beach State, congratulations to George Allen. He is now one and three overall and one and one in the Big West. He beats Pacific 28-7. The Tigers fall to one and three overall and 0-2 in the Big West. Fresno State, they are pouring it on. 42-3 in the fourth quarter at home. No surprise there. They're going to go four and overall. 4-0 and oh overall, and 1-0 in the Big West. And the Aggies, 21st consecutive loss. They're on their way to an 0-4 start. Raul De La Fleur will kick it off with one minute to play. That's McGowan's again. He is spun and dropped just across the 25-yard line. So we'll watch the final minute of this football game. It was a tighter game than that for most of the game. At halftime, it was 21 to 6. It was 21 to 13 early in the fourth quarter. And then San Jose State just devoured them on a big drive, led by Sheldon Candley. All right, San Jose. Well, Jack, I think we both Come agree on. that this man dominated the ball game, undeniably the most valuable player of this game, a new Spartan single game record eclipsing the 228 put up by Johnny Johnson Jr. back in 88. <laughs> 250 yards, West. That rushing, that's a lot of pounding. Looks pretty good for the wear, though. Doesn't look too beat up. And you know, last week, Terry Shea was very concerned about the running game. No need to be concerned now, though, as this guy took it over the fourth quarter last week, and this week he rushes for 250. And next week, they'll probably get Lionel Mayo back, young man who was arrested last week for the possibility of domestic violence. That's why he missed our game last week and this week. He was suspended for this ball game. Not technically, but in reality, he was not allowed to play by the coaching staff. He'll be back. That's a flag there. You got a flag that, yes. Interference on the Spartans. McCardle's looking around. <laughs> yeah, it was Keenan reached down and grabbed that flag. And what he's telling the official was, it's about time you make one of those calls. And you don't need that, Keenan. Was that number? That's number 36, Elliot Franklin, who is the the guilty part. Let's watch him again. Yeah, there's no question of this right here. The receiver is McKeenan is behind. He's just dragged right <laughs> down to the ground by Elliot Franklin. And, uh, <laughs> the, well, I think he interfered, don't you think so? Yeah, Jack? there's definitely some. Uh, <laughs> it was not inadvertent contact. It was. Uh, it's my chance to play, and I want to make the most of it by Elliot Frank. You know, it's a great play because they don't spot it at the uh, point of the infraction. It's marked off from the last scrimmage, so he made a good play. He was going to get beat anyway. You bet. Eric Stott. He has no misfeeling tonight. He is running with nearly nowhere to go, but he was able to make something out of that one, turning it upfield for a good gain. Eric Stott. He had a rough night tonight. They were all over him. Yep. We talked about that last week. What a fine job the linebacking core for the Spartans does. Uh, they did last week against the Tigers of UOP. They did it again tonight, not allowing the quarterback to have a whole lot of time when he sets up, putting a lot of pressure on their quarterbacks, containing their running backs, not letting the, the uh, backs get outside, get to the perimeter. Fine job. And most good football teams have an outstanding array of linebackers. The San Jose State team is no exception. One half minute to play in this game. It is McCardle again. He is spilled down by Jensen. 
The flag goes down. We have a little late activity here, a little frustration coming out on McCardle, and some of these Spartan defenders don't get a chance to play much. They want to want to pop somebody when they get an opportunity. Sure you do. You know, you get into play late in the ball game, you haven't played that much all year long, you get a shot at somebody, especially receivers, and that's why we take such a beating as as receivers. He's going down right there. Let's see where the late hit comes in and Wait a minute, was that number two in there, Charles Thomas? Charles Thomas and Jensen. Delay on the offensive team. It'll be first and, first and 15. They're saying it's a delay. I think they're getting McCardle for a celebration. Yeah. Yeah, it was on McCardle, the dead ball foul. I think they say he delayed. But then they're moving the ball back against UNLV, and what yeah, happens is he throws the football away. Yeah, he threw the ball to the face mask, showing off some frustration for this game, and he, what he thought was an extra hit there by Thomas. The game is coming down. This could be our last play. Option. Well, Stott does not want to end it on that note, but it looks like he might. They're not going to stop it. We are done. San Jose State is 2-0 in the Big West Conference, and overall, they are 2-1-1. One, one. The Rebels, Jim Strong, he's 0-1 in the conference, overall 1-3. Jack and I come back to recap at 47-13, the final.